<laughs> All right, we back. My expert opinion, the greatest show in the world, 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 world. world, 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 world. Come on, Zeno, you got to do it with us. World, 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 world. Let's do that again, world in this Let's go. <laughs> Let's get it. Hit that like, hit that share, let everybody know you're in here. Don't cost you no paper unless you're a mother. Hater, 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 it's a little confusion in the background. We're about to get it clear. Mm -hmm. Don't look! <laughs> God damn it. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> the people supposed to be here. Come on. Yo, Nigga, how you, you doing? Shit. I am the man. I'm fine. I'm fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. We're all fine. We're, We're all fine. We're all fine. fine. There's Everything's nothing going fine. on. Everything's normal. Everything's normal. Everything's normal. Just, just, Everything's a, normal. just a regular day. Everything's, Everything's fine. Everything's normal. Why be what up? Sean Bigger, man of God. Peace. Man of Texas. See this? In the Texas area. <laughs> shout out to the game. <laughs> shout out to the game. Shout out to the game. YB, shout out. Man, what's Split up? Out no murder. Cap, young Black. We in the building. What's up, man? Yo. I should have toasted my man Champ first, though. Happy belated oh, yeah. mother yeah. birthday. Hey, hey. So so no, 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 Champ. No, 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 Champ. No, 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 G Day. Thank you. Hello. Thank Another you. one around the sun. Hey, to you. Hey. I got a cake. Oh. I got a cake. I had a cake since I was two. Man. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, dear Champion. Champion. Happy birthday to you. Knock my head off. Happy G. One of those episodes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Holes. Thank you. That's all right. They got you with the balls. They got you with the balls. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. Chill, champ. That's enough, champ. Yo, it's still lighting. <laughs> I wish they were about to pass wish, out, bro. Good, good luck on that wish, my guy. <laughs> it's gonna be a hard wish to come by, bro. There you go. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it, bro. Thank you. Yo, look at Thank you. I am thank not. You. Yeah, champ. Look at him, bro. Look at him. And he just spit all that. That was a lot. Came in on a special day, like, huh? That's a fact. Shit. That was like five minutes of the episode. Goddamn. Wow, wow, bro. That's big, man. Yo, listen, I gotta say something. So. First of all, I'm grateful. I am super, super appreciative of opportunities that have come to me since I've been home from prison. It's only been a little over two years. This is my third birthday home. No police contact, no issues, no street shit, no fighting, none of the shit that I used to do. And it's because I've been given the opportunity to do something better. That's right. Mm -hmm. So I'm grateful for everyone that has helped me along my journey. Matt, my brother, Mr. Gyro from YKTV Magazine. Wifey, like everybody, I'm just super grateful to be sitting next to legends. Come on, man, it's love, brother. And to be a part of something legendary. Yeah, you, brother. You know what I'm saying? Thank you so much. I appreciate y'all, man. Y'all look. Thank you, brother, my G. Well, appreciate that. Tell Tonight you. in the building, we got a made man. Man. Listen, <laughs> regardless of, of whatever negative headlines you might have seen, this man helped change the culture. He helped shape the culture. Facts. He had one of the most influential uh, magazines. It, this, this was something that we used to run to the stores for. First thing we do, who's on the cover, who got the quotable, mm -hmm. who's in the unsigned hype. You know what I mean? And, and these, every edition probably helped grow this culture in ways that is immeasurable. Now, I know some of y'all don't know about the magazines and all that, but it was a very big fucking deal. Absolutely. And we're going to talk about it tonight. Ray Man, man. Ooh. Yo, man. That might be the best introduction I ever got. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, man, Matt, first of all, you know, congratulations for everything. Thank you, bro. I'm proud. I can say I'm proud of you. Thank you, I, bro. Because I've seen you, you know what I'm saying, your growth, and also Mecca, you know what I'm saying, because Mecca was at the source. 
Yeah. So, you know what I mean? Like, you know, I'm proud of you guys, man. You know what I mean? Salute to all y'all because, Thank you know, you, you. y'all's podcast is, is, is more than just a podcast. Y'all are teaching these young, this new millenniums, and that's, that's the most important thing. Right. We got to give them the, the right information. Right. That's right. the only way we're going to help the situation is if we give them the right information. That's a fact. That is a fact. Yeah. As far as the right information goes. I'm ready. Where do we start? Man, I've been so waiting for this. <laughs> You're so waiting oh, for it? Oh, man. I've been, been waiting for it. Man. Whew. Why not get the unsigned hype, Zeno? Not, okay, now hold on. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest. Now, look, look, look. So, so you got to refresh my memory. So All right. We're going we to run it back. All right. Years ago, um, Jose he used to ride around with Foxy. Okay, Jose, that, yeah, Foxy's that's driver. The yeah, right. that's yep, the homie. Yep, yep, yep. He brought me to the lab because mm-hmm. I was getting too much hate on that side. Really? And he introduced me to you. See, I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know that. Fox 5? Oh, yeah. I was I battling that. niggas, smoking them. It was bad. You know what I <laughs> mean? Shout out <laughs> to my man Mouse. Mouse is to this day. Right, right. Shout out yeah. to my nigga Mouse. You know what I mean? Um, And Mouse is nice, too. People don't yeah, know. Yeah, he was... He was, yeah. Mouse was like the, the, the mace of the crew. You Mouse is nice. Like, well, <laughs> shout out to Mouse. Um, first, first thing I did when I met you was I put my arm around you and I started mm-hmm. rapping. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you was like, Yo, you nice. I was like, I remember. <laughs> yeah, because you didn't, yeah, because you wasn't stopping. Like you had a long ass verse. Yeah, you know <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I respect still that though, because like, you know, past past 24 bars, if a nigga's still going and, and spitting, then you know he know his shit. You know what I'm saying? Because usually, mm-hmm. 24 bars was the, like the was the limit. The cutoff. Right. The cutoff. Right. If a nigga go past 24 and he's still, then yeah he. Right. Yeah. You told me to come to the studio next day. And I and I heard about you by the way. Before so that, that. wasn't yeah yeah. So I came to the studio. You had rock the party out. Was rock the party out? It was out. That's when I asked you to do the Eminem thing. No. That was. You asked me to that do was a after. remix. First, no, no, I asked you to do a diss song. I'm about to yes, do. right. But, but you, but first, you put me on a remix to rock, the rock the party. party. Okay, that's right. With Lil right. Kim, you that's was right. like, yeah, Kim that's jumping right. on the that's joint. Right. Ah, that's right, that's right. Come on, man. Come on, man. That's right. Oh, damn. It's like this, the super look. And shout out to Kim too. Yeah, and shout Fo- out to Kim and Foxy. And Foxy. Um, our body diverse. <laughs> I remember body that diverse. Shit. I remember that shit. I remember that shit now. A week later, right. Phone call. I think the Thank um you. the M dish had just came out. You said, Mav, you a lyrical monster. Right. Come over here, handle this business. I'm trying <laughs> to put these hits out. I'm trying to put these hits out, man. Let's get it. Let's get it. Ah uh, ah. Uh, I said, mm. Hmm. Now, at the time, everybody would advise against this. Right. But I was, you know. So I forget that. Yeah, yeah uh, we we're we gonna get this. Gonna get this. <laughs> so I said, yo, if I do this, uh-huh. I get to skip the shiny suits. <laughs> I ain't gotta do none of that shit. <laughs> the shiny suits suits was it was dominating at right. that time. Uh-huh. Like that was right. like the That's right, no you gotta go, you gotta do the right. shiny suits. Right. right? Mm-hmm. And I was like, yo, if I do this and I do it right, I get past this shit. All right, cool. And you brought me around the team before. I met uh, the Made Man. You Hell know, they yeah, made the yeah, beat. yeah, yeah. They chefed up the beat. Yeah. It was like a uh, funeral music. Dun, dun, it was going to be easy for me to do that. See, for me, okay, I ain't got to worry about shit. Right. Yeah, yeah, I right. just handle that. But then, I ain't got to worry about shit. Because <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm a spit it. I'm a spit it. You know what I'm right, saying? Right, He's right. going to write it for me, and I'm a spit it. Gotcha, it's not gotcha. like he was going to diss him. No, this I was, was dissing him. No, I know, but, but, but you was going to write shit for me. I asked you to write me a diss song for him. Also, you know what I'm saying? Let me let me finish. Okay, the go story. ahead, go ahead. <laughs> Came to the studio, got the beat from the hangman. Yeah. Sat in the other room. Right, 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 right. I came back <laughs> in. You was laying some other shit down. I was like, all right, I'll yeah. come back tomorrow. I was with my man, I was with uh John Rico. Yeah. Left, came back. You was like, yo, you need to hear this die another day, Debbie shit. I was like, what? <laughs> He's dying another day. We gonna do this. Da, da. <laughs> you hit the button and it played. And I was like, oh, all right. All right cool. I then we just like, yo. 
Rest in peace. This is shit. Hut six. Shit. I was yo, like, what? Yo, okay. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. Hut six. Six. You know what I mean? All Hut six. Six. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I think. Uh, who was the other artist? Lo. Lo and Hardy. And Hardy. Remember yeah. the Untouchable. Yeah. Facts. Remember? He was like, yo, this is Lo. We went in on. <laughs> yo, I got, I got this group called Uno Dos. They dissed them in Spanish. <laughs> like, yo, Zeno, what are you doing, bro? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Hey, he was like, yo, hey, yo. I'm going to drop a, a whole mixtape with the next issue hey, of the yo. source. You Look at the me. cover. No, you had the cover you with, the, with, the, with holding up the M&M oh, head shit. and all that Number? shit. Oh, yeah. yo, Matt, oh, you're killing me, yo. <laughs> Damn. And I was like, man. Yo, I was obsessed, bro. I was, you seen it, Yeah, bro. I know. I saw it. I saw it. K Slay was in the room. I ain't gonna lie, it was, a, it was a crazy, it was a he crazy. Was right on I the was couch. going nuts, man. Just I was like, what the fuck, man? Yeah. Like, I ain't gonna no, it was, but look, look. My thing was, I'm straight now. I got mad. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. See, cause look, look, y'all gotta understand. Like, and and, and I, let's get in depth to it. Because the, the good thing about this is I can put to bed any type of misconceptions. Mm -hmm. A couple of them. The Eminem battle, I fucked the sauce up. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. I want to get all this out to where I can I can have my say so. Because really, you know, when you look at the comments, everybody looks at comments. You can't say you don't. Oh, he's the one that fucked the sauce up. Mm. Oh, he's the one that fucked. Like, when I was the one that popped the sauce off. Oh, right. Because after I left, the sauce went downhill. So, so like, I just want to be able to just to, to so, pe so people can understand my role and the things that they thought I may have, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, then I can, if it was a mistake, then I can admit that at this point. But but I think people have misconceptions on how things went. But back to the Eminem thing. My nigga, like, like my thing was, I was, you know, Eminem, how can I say, okay. Let's take, let's, let's go to cannabis, right? Let's mm -hmm. go to cannabis. Did y'all fuck with cannabis? Yes, absolutely. Did, did y'all really fuck with cannabis? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yes. Like, you, you we, fuck with We cannabis? didn't really fuck with his album. Right? But, no, but him, yeah, him, him, is, him is an artist. He's yeah. yeah. an artist. Yeah. 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 Right? Okay, beats, so right? let me ask y'all a question. And I need to, because it, this is so good now. I'm so fucking happy right now. Because I get to really, a lot of this shit will get put to bed now because y'all have the intelligence and hip hop acumen to at least have a conversation to where it makes sense. And if right. I'm wrong, you let me know. Right. And then I'm, then I, I you know, it's, it's, it's no problem. Right. So look, so, all right. Y'all don't talk about cannabis at all. Y'all would never talk about cannabis. Y'all oh, would no, bring that. Wait, we had a bump yeah. yeah. oh, Okay, y'all. No, yeah, no, no, no. But I'm saying it. after that, y'all yeah. would never bring cannabis up ever again. Oh, no, I took shots of cannabis for years. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but look at that. I can't agree with that. Hold on, hold on, hold on. In what sense? In right. what sense? Like, we just, would never bring cannabis up in No, no, just a sense of like, when y'all are having conversations about who's dope and who's not, right. bring up cannabis. Bro, let me you know tell you something. In prison, I did four state biz. In prison, he was the topic when it came to talking about him. Because he's yeah. dope. Like, oh, who you think could, could destroy him? Ah, ah, ah. Yeah. Cannabis. Everybody. Right. Right. Always so, why did it, so why did it cannabis make it? Well, that's different. So why, did, why didn't cannabis pop off? It's, According to him? Well, no, just... Because we Cannabis and Eminem, right? I'm mm -hmm. just trying to... Are like like they're both at, at that time were both lyrically. See, in hip hop, there's a there's a bunch of different hip hops. Right. You know what I'm saying? Back then, gangster came up and then backpack, which I considered like college, you know, really connected to college, Spike Lee movie. Like that was the culture back then. Like it was gangster, and then it was like what college people listened to. Right. Because the hood was split back then in the 80s and 70s. Like either you went to college the army, or you were selling drugs. That was it as a right. black person. Right. That's it. Nothing else unless you was on another planet. So hip hop um, was in all three, like not the military, but as far as um, as far as far uh, college, that's what backpack, lyrical, you know what I'm saying? Gangster, kill you up, hard beats, uh. Right. All right. I, like, it didn't, like, I never really got into that type of hip hop. Even as much as I've, I've been in hip hop since 11 years old. Like, and I told the story, but I gotta tell it here because y'all are these hip, y'all are hip hop niggas. So it, 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 not that it didn't mean something, but it means more here because I was, my grandfather lived on Cedar Avenue. That's mm -hmm. a couple of blocks over from Cedric Avenue, where hip hop arguably was 
was, that's what it started, started with yeah. Cool Herc. Right. Now I didn't know this back then, but I, I like I would be getting shipped from Boston to New York five months out the year, and it was either stay with my grandmother in Brooklyn, she didn't speak English, so it was hard. Right. Or my grandfather over here on Cedar Avenue, right by Fordham Road. Right. He married another woman. She had a hair salon right on Fordham Road, Spencina's hair salon. He had a. Uh, a garage, he had a house up there, because there's a few houses when you go up there. Down the street was Jimmy's. Before Jimmy's, it was a car lot. That's right. how far back, like, you know, it wasn't even Jimmy's, man. Right, that was right, the original right. Jimmy's. Jimmy's, right. But it wasn't even Jimmy's, it was a car lot. Right. So I, I, so my Uncle Eddie, I was 11 years old, so that was 1976. He, he was in the basement, my Ed, but it wasn't a finished basement. This was when basements was rocks. <laughs> yeah. Big ass yeah, rocks. The, the, the walls you know that yeah. coming out it of the walls flat. and shit. Yeah, yeah. rocks. Was so, so, but he hooked it up. Bruce Lee pitches everywhere. Fucking um, those, remember the back in the day? The, I'm older, but the felt joints with the, uh, the, uh, the, the astrology and shit, the felt joints yeah, yeah, with yeah. the afros, yeah. you know, nets hanging. But, but he had two turntables and they were belt driven. And they were Gemini's, and he had a Gemini mixer, and 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 he taught me how to scratch. My father was in the feds. He had a, Eddie had a, my father is Eddie's. So my grandfather had Eddie when he was young. So I mm -hmm. mean um, old. So me and Eddie are a year apart. But right. That's my uncle. That's my father's brother. Right. That's, okay. So Eddie, um, he taught me how to scratch. To be real, Gloria Gaynor. Apache, the original Apache. Down, mm. down. Shoot, the one Nas made major look. Right, right. They right. shooting. Yeah. But back in the day, Sugar Hill had a song, really a song called Apache. Right. Apache, jump on. So, anyways, yeah. um, I learned how to I learned how to cut at eleven years old. I went and seen Wild Style with, you know what I'm saying, um, in 79. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like like it, it literally changed my life. Like changed. Cause all I knew was just really street shit. You know what I'm saying? And then Disco, Rick James, like, you know what I'm saying, Parliament Funkadelic. It wasn't, you know what I'm saying, fat back crew, like, bands. But when hip hop came, and those moments I remember, in his basement, learn how to cut, and then watching Wild Style. Right. So now I'm in Boston, so I'm, I'm coming up, like, really now on some gangster hip hop shit. I, my crew was spitting street shit because at that time, in the 80s, Boston was super, super like, I say 83 to 82, Boston started forming gangs. Once they started seeing, whenever Colors came out, mm. that's when it was really just out of control. Like after Colors came out, Boston just started, everybody grabbed teams and, and Colors and actually was gang banging him. The difference with, with Boston is in LA spread out and Boston, everybody's right next to each other. That project's over here, this project's over here. So niggas been killing each other for like 30 years. I have some Chicago shit, but much, it's only like 15 miles is Black Boston, Blue Hill Avenue, run through it. Right. So I, I listen to street hip hop. And I say all that because even if Eminem wasn't Eminem, I didn't listen to cannabis. I just didn't listen to that type of shit. I listened to all music coming up as a DJ, Jungle Brothers, everything. But the extra lyrical, da -da 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 -da, I wasn't listening to that. So why not? I just, it, because I, I think I think the way I grew up was so fucking street and everything that when N.W.A. came out, because that's that's what we was listening to in Boston. A lot of New York shit, of course. So y'all ain't fuck with Cool G? Of course. Cool everything G. you see, Cool G talks street. Of course, he talks street. Of course, of course. But right. cool, cool G rap was like a nigga that could spit, had the old school with him, and he would throw shit in it. But he was so lyrical, like Meg said, that you didn't catch it like. Real niggas with big dicks, you know what I'm saying? Like right. N.W.A. came up with some shit that just made niggas like he, they they made gangbang music. They made attitude music that get a nigga ready to go shoot up some shit. Re rebellious, screw face, mad music. Right. Whereas well, Zeno, that, you don't feel like you don't feel like that left you in a box. Yeah, no, because, because you only listen to that certain no, type no, of music no, no, and didn't listen to no, anything no, else. No, because I listen to everything else. K.R.S. I love K.R.S. Right. Ultra magnetic. I listened to everything, but what I adapted to as a group was gangster music because that's what was going on in the city. Right. And but I listened to everything. But cannabis, I didn't listen to. I didn't listen to cannabis. I just did it. And Eminem, and no, no disrespect, because I understand when, when I watch people give him props and everything, I go by that. I don't necessarily listen. Well, let me see if he's really, you know what I'm saying? So I understand Eminem and how he can rock. 
But I'm, I'm gonna be honest, and y'all gotta be honest too. If Eminem was black, y'all wouldn't be going that crazy over Eminem. And I it's only I can't say that because yeah. there's so many niggas around you that you and that, and that you battle who probably just can spit just as good. But niggas don't because they're not white. It's not a phenomenon. Like no, I he's a white boy and can spit like that. You, you see, that's really yeah, what but, it is. But but, but, but that's but, part of the. That's but, part of the. That is part of his mystique. There we go. It is part of it. Right. But you can't deny, like, I didn't know what color he was the first time I heard him. And I was like, who the fuck is that? You didn't know Eminem was white the first no, time you heard him? No, I didn't. It was uh, Future Flavors. I think they played a joint with uh, Royce and M. And I, I could, you know, back in the days, you sitting by the radio, getting ready to record shit or whatever. Right. I didn't recognize the name, so I didn't record it. Right. Once that nigga started rapping, right. I was like, whoa, wait a minute. Right. This motherfucker's good. Mm -hmm. Right. I didn't know he was white. Right. Right. Yeah. When right. I remember I'm the last man standing at the drive into the Grand Canyon, hop out of the Trans Am and land in their hands down. I was like, yeah. whoa, yeah. hit the button. Yeah. This nigga know how to put yeah. it together. Yeah, you look, know what I mean? So, so then, so then, so, and I can understand that because that's the side of hip hop. And of course you listen to gangster shit too. But it's the same thing with me. Right. Of course I listen to that, but that's not what. I'm not gonna be excited about that as y'all are. Right. So you know, when it comes to me white, being excited, I'm gonna white be more excited. Than, I'm gonna be more excited about real, real niggas don't die. Like I'll go in the gym to my mother and I'll listen one hour and a half to real niggas don't die over and over until I leave right. that motherfucker. And then I'll get in the car and I drive home and I don't listen to nothing. But I'll go in the gym and listen to that motherfucker an hour and a half straight. So I just, so you understand what I'm saying? So you no, see how get, this genre makes me feel away, and that genre makes you feel away. Mm -hmm. The thing with Eminem is that, what y'all don't realize is that you know, he is white, and and like, okay. Put the put the lyrics aside. Put the lyrics aside. When hip hop has been about battling since day one, right? That's what hip hop is the foundation of hip hop. Right. You you've done it your whole career. And, and, and you've done an amazing job. Thank you. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, because, you know, like I was, I started like, like the Smack DVDs. That's when I really started, you know what I'm saying, with dude, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh man, you know, you know what I mean? I was like, dudes, like, like I'd be impressed. And even now watching it, and I, and I get it on my, on my feed, on my Instagram. So I'll be able to see it. I won't see the whole thing. Yeah, but yeah. the shit that I'm seeing is like, oh my oh, God, because yeah. I, I come from that. You know what I'm saying? Wild style was that. These right. niggas was battling and... So that's, when we was RSO, we battled other crews. We'd go up there with a bunch of niggas, a DJ and three MCs, a beatbox, and battle niggas. And who went when, you know what I'm saying? Like the crowd, you know, it's not like, well, who's the winner? But you would see by the crowd. So I understand the whole shit. With Eminem, I just, you know, I came from Boston, right? Boston is a racist town. And probably more racist than down south because it's up north. You know what I'm saying? Down south, it's like, okay, yeah, you in the cotton fields and up north, it's calculated on how they really are gonna fuck you up in the long run. Like, in Boston, the Commonwealth? It's Commonwealth. Like, that means that they could just come in and just change the laws as they go, as right. they go. Um, I came up in Boston where it was like segregated. There's white people all around us, there's Blue Hill Ave, and that's the hood. There's projects, and there's niggas, and it's us. It's us. And we, 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 we wasn't, we don't, we, what, we wouldn't go over there because we would get fucked up. And they wouldn't come over here because they would get fucked up. That's how I grew up in Boston, Massachusetts in the 70s. But to how, early how did that work for you being half white? I'm not half white. I'm, I'm Cape Verdean Puerto Rican. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, like, yeah. see, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. my, mother, my mother's Cape Verdean, my father's Puerto Rican. There's, 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 there's the flags. If I was white, I would I would be proud. Dave Mays, Dave Mays, Dave Mays, Dave, 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 me and Dave Mays accomplished many things. Dave was Jewish. Like me and Dave went through a lot together for 18, 20 years, 20 some more years, right. and built something that, as far as magazine and publishing wise, will never be built again, right. ever. You know what I'm saying? So you know, why did you accept Dave being a part of hip hop, but not? Eminem. It's not, it's not, it's not, it wasn't the acceptance. It wasn't the acceptance. And he necessarily didn't have, like, you know, it wasn't a blame game of Eminem. Like, I don't like him. I don't, you know, at that time, with me being the source, 
I'm just like, you know, I understand how it's unfair growing up in a city that gets white privilege. And, and we always, it, 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 growing up like that, again, when you're young, it's your younger years that shape who the fuck you are. Mm -hmm. So so how you growing up, whether, you know what I'm saying, whether it's one parent, two parent, in the streets, out the streets, and chances are that's, that shit's going to... It's gonna stick. It's gonna stick with you. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Racism stuck with me. You know what I mean? And my father was in the Italian mafia. Schnapps was really heavy in the mob. Twenty five yeah. years feds. So I'm fucking with Irish, Italian, Jewish, Colombians through him while he's in jail. So I'm I'm taking over his shit now because he was that nigga. Like you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. So I'm dealing with white men and I'm getting along with these white men. I'm listening to them. They teaching me shit. I'm in awe of these men. But I still, I still got to deal with, you know, everywhere you go in Boston, everything you do, motherfuckers is looking at you crazy. You can't do a certain thing. You can't, like growing up with that, always growing up where they have first dibs on everything. So, so hip hop, right? I felt like hip hop was us. In the South Bronx, now in the South Bronx, I don't know if people know it, people from New York, but back then, in the 70s, that shit wasn't even like, how could that even be United States the way that shit was? Hip hop came out of that. Like, and the saddest thing is that a lot of these young guys do not pay homage to the people that even came, because if you see where hip hop, like the type of poor that hip hop came, came out from. of, the type of poor. Yeah, abandoned buildings, broken glass, bro, bro, everywhere. Bro, bro, that's what I'm saying, while white yeah. people was living good yeah. in the suburbs, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm not, I, like, my mother Mary Scott raised a great man, like a good man. I don't hate people for their color, but I'm scarred for the bullshit that happened. Right. Dave is my brother. I love Dave. Like, a, like Dave is the closest to brother than probably, me and Dave spent more, me and Dave spent more time with each other than any, than any of my brothers. Were you ever uh, assaulted at a young age Never. by racist people? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. One time, okay, man, math. So I got accepted to Boston Tech. Took a test. I did it for my mother. I was selling mad drugs. I went to, um, I, I did it for her. I got into Boston Tech because I was smart. I was, you know what I mean? Like, got in there. I was selling weed or whatever. So we would come home on buses, but not on school buses. They would be um, regular buses. And then, you know, black people would be there and the white people here. It was, this was 81, <laughs> okay, in Boston. Wow. Yeah, bro, if you look in YouTube, you'll see bussing where, most shit that you see down south would be in black and white. You'll see that shit, go put busing, bus, like a bus, busing, segregation, busing. That shit gonna be in color, where you gonna see thousands of white people when the bus comes and drops a few black kids off to go to a school, throw shit at them, turn the buses over. This is in the 70s, not the 60s, not the 50s. This is 70s. in color. Yeah. So this is what we had to grow up with. So, so you know, get the fuck out of here, little kids, get the fuck out of here, nigga. Throwing shit at the buses, it was horrible. When you get a chance, please just, just please pull it up so you can just understand. Like this is what I had to grow up, and this what, was my what was backdrop. Your, what personally, what was your experience? Uh, um, got into a beef one day with 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 these cats. They stabbed me. Uh, white dudes had stabbed me. A little stab on my belt and on the side. But then the next day came. Fuck, you know, niggas. There was a whole big thing on the bus, and I got kicked out of tech. Had to go to the burg. But that was like a real thing. <laughs> Um, was your mother disappointed? Very. Oh man, cried and everything. Cried. And, see, you know, in in the streets, right? You got niggas that are in every streets. You always got some the niggas who are super wild, even wild in you. I don't even kill somebody. This nigga killed seven people, and you know, you ain't as wild as right. him. The reason of that is is because he don't have the conscience given to him from his mother. That's how niggas turn into animals. Because if there's no con, like, damn, I don't want to do this because I'm thinking about her. If that's not in you, then that's it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to tear shit up out there. You know what I'm saying? You know, fathers is good, but the mother got it. it it's, it's, that's the mother why, teaches us compassion. That's why mothers are so important. Compassion. That's why mothers are so important because anything, like, I, like I've been through some shit in the streets, but it was always a thought of my mother. So you know what I'm saying? It was like I've crashed a few times, but I didn't jump off the bridge. Always a thought of my mother, and that's just what it was. Like you know what I'm saying? That's what that's what saved me. Hip hop and 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 my conscience from my mother, because because my father was get out there, let's go. Yeah, nigga, 13th, you know. Yeah, get out there. I was yeah. 
Yeah, go visit him. Yeah, I need you to go. Okay, boop, 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 boop. go visit him again. I need to take this note, stick it in my ass, bring it, bring it to another Italian nigga up in another Fed joint, like 14, 15, 16, you know what I'm saying? Like, at a, you know, so she wasn't with it. Hard working, Cape Verdean woman. For those who don't know Cape Verdean, the islands off of the west coast of yeah. Africa. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cape Verdean people of, of Portuguese descent. Right. You know what I'm saying? You know, but just like everything that mixed in with Africans, that's what Cape Verdeans are. Mm. So, you know. Beautiful people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gorgeous people, man. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful people. Man. Hardworking people, too. Yeah. You know, proud people. You know, a lot of people. I didn't know about my Cape Verdean until later. Because, I, I, like I told Chastity, I said, when I went to school, it was black, white, or other. Right. And, you know, I'm putting black. And then I'm picking my head and it hurts. I'm black, my nigga. Shit. <laughs> 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 fuck. <laughs> Say the fuck. Yeah, so that's how I never looked at myself as light skin ever. I never got into the light skin shit. I would look at Prince and them niggas as light skin. You see what I'm saying? That's how I was. I was like, I'm light skin. Like, I, I, I always never looked at myself as a light, light skin. skin. You was a light skin nigga calling all the niggas light I skin. I never, I just looked at them <laughs> niggas like he said, he's. Like, look at this nigga, this pretty boy. Like, I never looked at my, I never, I never got involved with that. See, I, I didn't grow up around Spanish people. In, in, in early years in Boston, Spanish were like kind of segregated, but Boston was black. You know what I'm saying? It was nothing else. Right. Black. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, um, that's what I, that's what I grew up around. That's how I did my dirt around. All my niggas who done died in jail, it was all black. You know what I'm saying? And then as I got older, I understood because my father used to speak fluent. You know, because my grandmother is, is Puerto Rican. Right. But I couldn't speak Spanish. But yeah, man, I, you know, it's not like I didn't accept him. M. It's just that I knew that he's going to get all this extra. All right, I'm going to go deep. In America, there's a lot of white people that will never, ever experience a black person. A lot of that's in the Midwest. Montana, Dakotas, and everything. Right. right. All right. Their heritage is, they're proud, and there's nothing to matter with that. They, they, I'm white, and, and what I like is, is, is white. Right. Because that's, that's them. That's all, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and, and I respect that. That's their right. That's their fucking right. right. Like every fucking, that's what makes America, if, 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 you know, it's cliche, but that's what's supposed to make America amazing, right? right. So, okay. So, they, they, you know, back then when we came up with it, the white people came and said, yo, niggas, this is cool. Like this. Hip hop shit is dope. Yeah, it, it it never happened like that. It happened in music before, like like they flipped out over music. Yeah, but the culture they didn't get involved with the culture. They didn't they listened to the music, but they didn't necessarily want to dress like or kind of really talk like. Right, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, we, we, I'm, Hip hop was that strong. Yeah, right. So, you know, posters are all over the wall. Now a lot of now, and I'm not saying all white people. Come on, man. Come on, man. Mm -hmm. But a lot of a lot of places in America ain't with that shit. Get them Johnny's. Get them fucking DMX pit posters off the wall. Now, mm -hmm. Eminem, right? Even though he's the, the parents might be like, I really don't want you listening to this crazy shit because they're saying all kind of shit, which is every white black. You know, we all saying crazy shit in hip hop. Right. But since Eminem's white, it's all it's okay. I'd rather you listen to your own kind than listen to them. Now that goes on. You cannot deny that that goes on. You'd be naive to think that that doesn't happen. The problem with that is, and this is why I held, this is why, this is why the battle to me, it wasn't about rap. Like I know Eminem can rap better than me. You know what I'm saying? I'm not a fucking rapper. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, I love rap. I love hip hop. I know how to make music. I know how to produce. Right. I bet y'all didn't know that I produced that, that Nas is still Matic intro. Yeah, I did that. Me two times. Hangman three. Yeah. JB. Mm -hmm. That's our shit, and he still performs that every day. Yeah, we've been we've been doing beats since the SB twelve hundred that a white man from Queens taught me how to play in nineteen eighty seven, and he got killed. Paul C, wow. he's the one that did all the ultra magnetic shit. He taught me how to do the SB twelve hundred studio twelve twelve in Jamaica Queens, and I'm gonna come back. But this is a great. I'm glad we remember this. The great Paul C. Yeah. He worked with. He did. He did ultra magnetic. He did. He did. Um. 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 um he was working with Eric B and him at the time, KRS, but he was a whiz on the, on the SB1200. The SB1200 was the first drum machine to really have pads that sampled like two and a half seconds. It just wasn't like a So you, you could sample, you could actually put songs in there, music from records. 
So Paul C was a fucking whiz. Paul C's, the, the average producer would take a fucking kick drum and you would hear it go, that's it. Paul would cut it where the air would be on. He would sample something from an album. So the album's, dan, dan, boom, boom, cack, okay, from the album. Now he would sample the kick and then put the air on it all the way to the fucking snares. Producers who know what I'm talking about mm -hmm. watching this and nobody's never done it. So now when he's beating, it's all sounding like a nigga's just drumming because the air, he's not cutting the air off. Right. But he taught me how to do that. Two weeks we did recording the album, the so we doing a song with Ultra Magnetic. Got to meet said G. Cause those, you know what I mean? I was like, I used to love them niggas. MC, Ultra Magnetic, Magnetic. MCs, come on, them niggas was dope, bro. Way ahead of their time. So, Paul gets, I go to Jack the Rapper, we go to Paul's crib. Hey, he gives me Rufus Thomas' Funky Penguin album. I said, Paul, why don't you come with us to Jack the Rapper? Paul was like, nah, I'm a chill here. I said, okay, Paul, a little small, little white guy. Super cool. He was engineer and again, one of the dopest producers of that time. You don't get his proof. Paul McCaster. Niggas do their homework. Oh, Large Professor. Mm -hmm. He taught Large Professor. He was Large Professor's mentor. So let me go, let me go to the story. I, I come to the fucking, on my birthday, I'm coming to the studio, my birthday, July 18th. Paul's not there, nobody see Paul. Something's going on. We staying at the Kennedy Inn in Queens. Guns and shit at the Kennedy Inn. I go there, the whole, we rush over part of the whole shit's taped off. Now mind you, I, I, the last person he talked to was me that night. We went to Jack the Rapper at the Marriott. Right, and he said, I'm a chill. He said, I'm a chill. I go down Paul, now Paul had discs. I'm talking discs like, of that, all, all kind of shit. Sample discs, you know what I mean? Was a, I, I remember there was a big ass vodka thing. I said, Paul, you drink, man? He said, nah, man, I don't drink, man. That was, you know, so I forgot who. It was one of his mans. Somebody was sleeping because he was in the basement. So somebody I seen, you know, it was somebody sleeping there or whatever. But he was cool. Paul fucked with everybody. You know what I'm saying? He was a producer and he fucked with all Super Lover C, all these niggas Paul fucked with. So somebody shot Paul three times in the neck, in the head, in the head, point blank. Damn. I got snatched up for it. They snatched me up. It was in the paper and everything. So look. I'm like, I'm telling niggas, go, uh, go home, you know, try, get, get up out of here. So niggas got up out of here. They took me down to fucking, uh, they took a few other niggas down to the, to the precinct. They locked me up. Then they started interviewing niggas. And then like, yeah, so when Benzino went, and then, and then you heard shots. Because each one of them came back and told me later on what they was. So they, they, like, they held me for a day, and then they let me go and shit, you know what I'm saying? But that was my friend. I went to his funeral and wake. And I never forget, like, Professor, I seen the man just sitting on the curb, just crying and shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? People don't know. Like, it's not about white and black. You know what I'm saying? Like, some of my fuck, I said my father, like, some of the greatest niggas, like, the niggas that Roddy Bojo went against, the Anjulos. Yeah. Yeah, those are personal friends of mine. Like, I, like, when my friends go to the feds, and if they just get in, that's who I hook them up with. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. these are, these are honorable men. So it has nothing to do with white and black. I judge you by who you are. But I just know the system and how the system works. Right. And Eminem, when he came in, they wanted to change the system. The system was white buying black. They said, whoa, wait a minute, hold up. We got a pop stations over here that can make more money. We need this to be white and we need him to cross over. We're going to change the rules, FCC. He can say whatever the fuck he wants to say. Before, we couldn't say none of that shit to cross over. Mm -hmm. He could say it now. MTV, are we going to let him... Walk in a motherfucking radio music hall with 30 white kids with things. They would never let no nigga do, um, do no shit like that for the MTV Awards. Mm. They playing his videos more than anybody because they're making him pop because they're creating now an audience in America that, that, will, that, that will just, all the ones who don't fuck with niggas that will fuck with just white. But the whole time, this is feeding a black man. Feeding who? Dr. Dre. No, 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 no. It's, it's not about that because Dre was going to get money anyway. It's not about that. Dre's the, Dre is my favorite producer of all time. Right. Number one. Right. And I don't even do top fives or whatever, but I'm so influenced by his number one. And I'm a producer and I love music. Number one all times, Dr. Dre. So he ain't got nothing to do with that. Eminem got some cool songs I like. There's a bunch of shit I don't like. That's every artist. What's the songs you like? Um, Stan. Stan. Lose yourself, you know. Um, 
stand, lose yourself. And it was a, and, and you know, I like, you know, Nail in the Coffin was, was you know what I mean? I listened to Nail in the Coffin. <laughs> <laughs> did you I like do. it? Did you I like it? Of course. Of I you did. Relate to it? I did. No, because the beat was dope and he killed that shit. Like, yeah. 50 shit, like when 50 came out, like dope. Yeah. Like you, you, you can't separate. If you a nigga that's trying to separate your emotions from when music coming, you're like, no, I'm not gonna. Like you, then you, you a real. Yeah, you gotta analyze human being. it. You gotta. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I, 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 you know, my thing is, he deserved any. Like anybody deserved every piece of success he got. He earned it. It's just that I always looked at hip hop, and, and mind you, when I was at the at the source, I was at the top. I didn't have to answer to nobody. So I felt like my message would get across. Because mm -hmm. I even went up to Hot 97, said Russell was a coon. Because, you know, Russell was backing him. Angie and Flex turned on me. And, you know, one, one week, you know what I'm saying? Like, we spent a mad money with Hot 97. And Flex broke my son. Man, listen, when Flex dropped the bomb on um, Bang to This, mm -hmm. my first solo, man, I thought I, thought I, I could have died that night. It's my it's life would have been straight. Film. I could have died that it's a night. Film. I could have died that in my life. Those, those bombs are so important. I don't think y'all yeah. understand. I didn't when, when he dropped. Like, cause men, yeah. look, I, I came out of made men. I wasn't gonna be no solo artist, bro. Like I like I didn't. I knew I wasn't the greatest rapper. I knew that, but I also knew I knew how to make music. I made some great music. I mm. knew how to do that. That's right. why I had dope rappers with me, mm. like Cool Jesus and E. Devious was like on 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 your yeah. level. Right. You know what I'm saying? With it, you see, they're like and Jesus. It's funny because he's with us, but he is, and I don't want to say one of y'all, but you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Hip hop is divided, like I said before, when it comes to genres. Y'all's genre. No, is, I, I was the blend. I understand I that. I was the blend. I understand that, but you lean more to the. To the lyrical side? To your, yeah, of course. It, it, it's the craftiness, but for me, like, the older heads didn't want to hear that shit. They like when I talked the real shit. When I talked about shit that actually happened. That's when I got the reaction. And that's why throughout my battle career, I couldn't just battle niggas and make shit up. Right. If I had a real issue with right. you, right. I smoked right. your boots because right. I just kept it a hundred. And you hate niggas that battle and make shit up. Yeah, I hate that shit. You that shit is whack. It's like corny shit. Okay, so, 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 when a nigga, gangster rap nigga, is listening to a motherfucker like, gah, 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 you're like, man, that is not you. That is not you. Mm. Shut the fuck up. Mm. I, that's how I felt with homie. And, 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 and you know, that's that's some real shit. Like, okay, we battling, but you saying, oh, you you so cracking. You I did. All our people did. We, you know, yeah, mm. yeah, we did. You fuck, mm. we had to. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I, I wasn't, look. Eminem's this is me never real. I swear to God, it's like I'm keeping it real. So I kept it real with you when I said I like Neil the Coffin. His right. none of his shit really affected me because while he's trying to discredit me as a street nigga, I, I know I'm a street nigga. I've known the shit I've done. Like my yeah. niggas in the street know, who, you know what I mean. So that didn't bother him. That part didn't bother him right. at all. So that's why I never looked at it like he ended your career or he killed you because I just was like, well, like I, you know, and now if he came with. Now is this joint ether? Oh man, I probably y'all probably wouldn't. I probably would have. Yeah, I probably would have had to move out the, the country. <laughs> yeah, if he hit me with ether. The, yeah, yeah. It, it, now it's, it's a different. It's a different story now. Right. That's my number one of all time, by the way. Yeah. This records is ether. But if I he think hit, that's everybody's. If he hit me with ether, then then it would have hurt. His shit was like, I'm a beat nigga. So if a beat come on, I'm already like, mm, you know, I like those type of beats on disc records. Right. M's beats wasn't necessarily like, you know, they were still, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think if he, if, if M had different beats on his disc records against me, I think they could have had way more greater effect. But just anything M can do, people are going to be like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, he's, oh, he's yeah. the greatest, he's all, oh God, did you not, just not, that? Oh, not everything. Did you? Not everything. But at that time, <laughs> my nigga. <laughs> like, think about it, bro. Like, his oh, fucking right. fans, like, come on, like, his fans hate me. And it's only because it's like, like, they, uh, like I, okay, I seen the Koi interview. When y'all brought up Eminem, I was like, oh, like, what does Eminem got to do with Koi? Honestly, yeah. I was, you know what I'm saying? Right. And, 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 and I'm like, and I'm like, I'm like, 
Koi doesn't listen to Eminem. In no disrespect, see, when me and Eminem was going through that, Koi's trying to be politically correct at the time. Look, it, fuck that. that. I'm out here in my career. I'm not going to be fucking with this nigga too. Yeah. Because that's how everybody felt. I didn't know why I didn't have to feel like that. Because I was the top of my motherfucking food chain. Even Russ, Leo, all these niggas, Steve and everybody, they all had to answer to somebody. Mm. I was the top of, of a damn near $75 million company mm. when niggas wasn't getting money like that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I got, I, I got that big money first. And I was the top of that. So when the Eminem thing came through the source, at this point, it's getting disrespectful. So how the fuck am I going to have this nigga in my, in my magazine? Would you? Would you just be like, after y'all are battling, and man, believe me, I, you know, slap niggas, you know, beat niggas up for battling and everything, so you the last one, you know. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to put nobody in your magazine and give this nigga five mics after, after this nigga's being disrespectful. Uh, you, 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 you wouldn't do it, man. You wouldn't do Nobody would. Well, I can't who's say that. Who the fuck? Nah, I can't on, say that. What? But who, start, who started it? I done had people in the it shop that... Uh, I, I started it. We got I started a little it. nasty. Look, I started it. He started the Yeah. Do yeah. you know how I started it? Let, let me tell you, God, God rest honey, we in Miami chilling. I'm making mixtape. I say this one. I don't even know how the fuck he heard the mixtape. <laughs> <laughs> I say one little shit like... Eminem, that's what I say. Um, you ain't the Eminem. I got some made man. Some cool. I got white boys in Boston that'll bust well, Come on, ass. Mecca. Mecca, that's why you who you is, Mecca. That's why Mecca get yeah, Mecca hip hop. Mecca yeah. know all that shit. Yeah. Look, I didn't even fucking know. It was, it was on a song that was like the almost the third to the last. It wasn't even a diss song. I said one little fucking bar. Well, why'd you say it? Why not? Who the fuck is he? Why not? I, see, this is why I don't get a, a battling nigga who done just met slap beat up for hip hop, right? You see, you see how it changes? You changing it? You can't change it. He, he's I'm the not same. Mad at it. And and Matt, and look, Matt, look, 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 look. I need y'all to notice. I wasn't battling him to battle. I'm not a battle rap. Battle rapper takes a lot of skill. I'm a hip hop connoisseur. My hip hop knowledge. And my shit is so dope. Like I got over forty something years in hip hop. So I, you didn't think I realized like where I was in hip hop? Like, come on, bro. Like this isn't rocket science. Bang to this. I listen to Prodigy, God rest the dead, and I was like, man, I'm gonna spit like P. And when mm -hmm. you listen to Bang to this, and I and P was at the at the motherfucking um at my video shoot and. In Jersey at the crib, and yeah, I'm, my influence is coming from P. I got influence. If I'm like when I'm in the studio, I take influences. If I like some shit, then I'm like, yo, I like that. I'm gonna go. You know what I'm saying? Right. I wasn't that type of rapper that had my own. He's a yeah. Like sometimes I'm in there. I wrote with Made Men. I wrote my own shit. So it's not like Jesus or E ever wrote. But then I started having when I started getting signed to labels. Yeah, come on, writers, let's go. Yeah, get that. Yeah, hell yeah. Not only. I didn't look at it as dope, but then I'm helping niggas out too. I'm making niggas, niggas is eating. Right. Like I, everybody was at my studio, studio sessions. Like I had a couple million dollar, million dollar studio. I never rented it out. I never made money from it. You just come on in. I'm a quick story. Then we'll go back. So mm -hmm. one time, at, cause you know the studio. Yeah. So one time Remy and the nigga from Bars and Hooks. Bars and Hooks, Bars and Queens. Hooks. From Queens. Queens. That was yeah. Prodigy's group. That was yeah. Prodigy's group. Not, not DeLorean, but, but I forgot my man's name. My, these are my niggas. So they had just came and running because I guess somebody wrecked the car, <laughs> wrecked the beam, and they was right. So like they had came to the studio, but mm. that's, how, that's how, how, how much of a real chick Remy is. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Tim's on. You know what I mean? Police. You know what I'm saying? They, they ran over there to the studio. Come on. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that was that studio. So like... Yeah. I just love making music. I love hip hop. I'm not, I wasn't, I'm not into that. I love watching it and I respect it. And it's part of it. And believe me, I, shit, I get goosebumps sometimes when niggas say them, when y'all say that ill shit, because I know how much um, intelligence you, you have to have, how much work you got to put in. It just really, you know, it's not necessarily some shit you could just come in, because most rappers now, how long you been rapping? Two years. Ain't no fucking way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I respect what y'all do. It's just that me being at the top of where I was, I just felt like, man, can't niggas have something? Can't, like hip hop brought white and black together like no religion ever did, and it's good. We're eating for, we, without white people money, it's hard for us to eat. You know what I'm saying? Now they're investing in hip hop, right? So let's not worry about getting 
a white rapper. Okay, now we need the, he was, we have to get a white rapper. Like they tried a couple of times, it didn't stick right. because they want to build a white audience. Because those kids, remember? No, it was already a white audience. No, no, no. It was already a white audience. No, it wasn't. Of, 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 no, it wasn't. A rap, I'm a, talking a millions and millions of people. Fans that don't I'm talking to millions. Not, you, not, you ever been to a Snoop Dogg concert? No, no. Now. Now. I'm it's saying. It's a seal. Right. Now, the whole, the whole world of no, lives was white. Saying, wait, Wu-Tang concerts. Right. He's talking about right. something. But what they did work. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. Right. To your point, right. Because back then, it was us. Like, I went to Rolling Loud. Mm-hmm. And there was nothing but white people in there. And I'm like, shit, like, it was just different. Cause I never been to like somewhere where it was like all white people. And it's like, I'm like, this shit is like, not just being amazed by Koi, but just amazed. Like, I'm in, I'm in this with thousands of white people in, in a hip hop. That shit was a kind of like a, like, whoa, this yeah. is the, but that's what I see. Look, see, and it's good that, it's good that we have independence and it's good that white people support black artists. Because the, youth, because the youth did that. Yeah. But the powers that be, it was different. Like right now, there's no hip hop song right now from niggas that's top in the R nothing, like for the first time in 30 years, right? Mm. Like they slowly, you listen to pop stations before, you'd hear a bunch of niggas on there. You don't hear nobody on pop now. Yeah. Unless it's Post Malone or Eminem. And oh shit. Pop is where you get your real money from. How come niggas can't get on pop? Because that's what I'm saying, they separated it. See, hip hop meant inclusion. Powers that be says, wait a minute, these kids in South Dakota, they, they don't fuck with niggas, so we gotta make sure they're straight. So they came and took our genre and culture of music and said, okay, this is what we're gonna give you. Now you don't have to fuck with them. And that's what's happening. Mm. I know people think everybody's eating off of hip hop, that's not true. Like, you know, take them, those PPPs away from us, we'd be really fucked up. Mm. Like the hood's fucked up, and hip hop is what made brought, millionaires. Hip hop is what brought a few, a couple. I mean, it's forty, there's thirty six million black people. This, this is that's a very small percent of how many people are fucked up out here. Right, but how many how many millionaires did hip hop make? That, a few, but that's still a very small percentage of how many black people and Latino people are fucked up out as here. As long as it was more than it was before. But 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 it, it could be more if they didn't take that shit, rob us. Rob us, you see what, look, <laughs> it didn't take a rocket size. I'm listening to niggas now just being like, yo, it's unfair streaming. As soon as streaming came in, I was like, how the fuck? Even you two, how the fuck you seeing all these millions and you getting pennies and all that? Yeah. That shit been not fair. Yeah. So, 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 the people running that, they're not black. <laughs> the, the music's black, the culture's black. Right. I, so then, so, 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 that that was the beginning, I thought, of of them, the machine, using Eminem to go out there now and you know what I'm saying, we gotta create a genre, you know what I'm saying, to, you know, thank God for the South, because if the South never came up, the South kind of is what made Dr. Dre beats kind of like fade away, because that one two was over now. Now it's bounce. Right. And, and and the West di didn't get on the bounce the way the way the, the way the beats are being, you feel me? Yeah. So now, necessarily, white white folks didn't get on the bounce either. E e Eminem's beats are one two. That's how he raps on. He can rap on anything. I know. I know. Don't, don't kill me. Don't kill me. <laughs> <laughs> can rap on anything. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But right. what I'm saying, but 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 he's basically that one, that two step, that one two. You right. know what I'm saying? Um, if that didn't come in then believe me, like, you know, if, if the South didn't come in, then black people could have lost hip hop, the sound and everything. Mm -hmm. Because then more white people would have been able to get on that one two, and they would have been be able to push it. The South came in and said, wait a minute, and they wasn't expecting that. And that's what got us the music back, mm -hmm. was the South. Mm -hmm. If the South didn't come in with that bounce, we was in trouble. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we was in trouble. So you feel like, cause, all right. Now we gotta, I understand. I understand 100% what you're saying and knowing your background now, it makes a whole lot of sense on why that was a personal mission. Because, you know, give me two seconds, we got five minutes? Yeah, yeah, right. do your thing, do your thing. Let me take a break. Let's get, get. All right. Ah, 
I understand what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I get it completely. I, I've seen a lot of black CEOs get pushed out of position. However, in this case, I think taking aim at the people who create the agenda rather than an artist who grew up in the culture and trying to be part of the culture. Well, 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 well. He was at the source. We did our homework. He, he didn't grow up in our culture. Oh, when I say grow up in the culture, I'm talking Not about- Not even in hip hop I'm culture. talking about scribble jam. I'm talking about participating well, that was later. in like- the, Okay, what about, let me ask you a question. The base, what, the what, base level of- Well, look, of before stuff. that he was doing the Rap Racist Hour. Now, now, okay. Even though he you was- said the Rap- The Rap Racist Hour. The right. Rap Racist Hour. Yeah, because you remember the tapes and that we put out? Yeah, 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 yeah. Number, right? him saying he, right, broke so, up, he broke so, up with a black so girl. Yeah, so yeah, he yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on. But let's, let's, but let's, but let's go there now. Right. All right? Because my, see, to be honest, I would love to just never have to talk about Eminem again because this shit was so long ago. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I get it. When, 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 when all that happened, we, we, we decided just to dig deeper to see where he was really from. You know what I'm saying? Where he, where he grew up at. We, you know, we, he started out in Missouri. Then, you know what I'm saying? He got to Detroit, but not necessarily in the black part of Detroit. All right. So the guys that he had, his other group, there was in a group, it was just the three of them, right? They would do the rap racist hour, where they would just, you know, just talk about Nick Porch monkeys like black bitches. Women are whores. Black bitches only want you for your money, right? And um, I'm in Puerto Rico at the time. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on. Break this down. This is something that. So I'm in Puerto Rico. Uh -huh. I'm with Ja Rule. Ja, I see Ja. Shout out to Rule. Ja shooting a movie down there. I'm down there, and um, I get the call. Like Dave's like, yo, there's three white kids up in here with a tape. You need to get up here. I was like, what? And he told me what the tape was. It was a cassette. Man, I, I flew out the next that night. I flew out with a tape. I got there that night at the source. Right? It was a, it was a cassette. So I met these dudes. Now, apparently, these dudes had, had this tape had this tape for the last year, and it was trying to sell it to Irv Gotti for fifty bands, right? A while ago, mm -hmm. right? Now these are the guys that was in Eminem's group. They was in his group, right? Maddox and some other dude, and and um, they were white men. Yeah, they were white. Mm. They were white. And um, they was in Dave's office when I got there. You know what I'm saying? I was like, what's up, y'all? I said, so what we got? So they played it, you know what I'm saying? And you know, you could hear it, you know what I mean? Like they was doing freestyles. You could tell like it was some shit done at the crib. You know what I'm saying? And you know, it was like a lot of shit said, nigga this, nigga that, push. So I was like, one freestyle. Shit. Huh? One freestyle? I said, it was like, I guess it was freestyle. I it didn't cite no written shit, to right. be honest. That's right. real shit. I'm like, what? Yeah, Natural said that because no one ever asked me that. It didn't sound like they just sat there and it sounded like it was all freestyle. Right. So, um, the first thing I'm thinking, how much y'all want for it? Immediately. I'm like, yeah, we need that. You know what I'm saying? Shit, we need that. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm, 50, I'm not paying 50000 for it. All right, I'm out. No, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. I was like, Dave, I'm out. I was going back to the fucking airport. I was like, damn. And it was like, we got him down to 15000 Gave him five stacks that night, and I think the next day, I think Dave talked to him to the bank and got him to 10. But um, they was like, you know, after, I really didn't, I don't want to sit down and talk with him. Like at that point, I had kind of assigned the store staff to like, like it was 60 minutes. I need information on Eminem, where he's from. Mm -hmm. And this is what actually came up out of it was this tape. And it was the rap racist hour. That's what they said. Why, were you, why were you using the source staff for that? Because it was my magazine. It was my shit. And I felt like we, we wore in Jimmy Iovine's taking ads at this point. And, and, and this, is, this is the misconception. Like, losing Jimmy Iovine's ads and Eminem's ads, that wasn't shit. We getting McDonald's and Cadillac and every fucking Downey Softener and, and, and all the other fucking rap artists. Right. So, so people was giving him too much fucking power. Like, yeah, you you taking fifty, you taking M and Dre and that, you know. But those two are the really the hot ones at the time. It really wasn't, you know, what I'm saying, you know. So we wasn't like, all right, 
That had nothing to do with the source and what happened. I mean, not even a little bit. Mm -hmm. So that, that's a, that's a misconception. That's a lie. That's cat. You sure? I'm shocked. This is my magazine. I'm they, talking, listen, we listen, talking about the, we get, we, the we, hottest motherfucker we get, in the game that you matter. don't have access did to. Did it matter? Are you kidding me? No. He, hottest motherfucker in, to, to white people. No, I'm, white, talk, I'm talking about 50. No, no. No, um, no, nah, no. Nah, nah, it didn't. It really didn't. I mean, hip hop's huge, man. One person don't run the whole shit. Right. One label don't. It was. I mean, it mattered. Nah, 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 nah. See, see. Look, look. It look, mattered. Look, it definitely look, mattered. Break look, it down, look. man. Okay. No, it mattered. It mattered. Well, you're not because you're not financially. Just, financially, it didn't. Well, people want to be in the Eminem business. Other people want to be in the Eminem business. Other artists, other labels, other companies. They want to do business that. with yeah, Eminem. And, that. That, and that's the issue. And that that, that, that becomes so a how problem. many people have done you a favor that. without you asking for it? How many it? people done um, 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 um shut me out because of some bullshit? It goes but this, both but this ways. Is what I'm saying. It goes, it goes both hand. ways. Yeah, like, short yeah, fucking right. Right. Short short time. Especially if, if if I'm owning it. See, people would be like, well, why you have your ads in it? Oprah's on the cover of her fucking magazine every month. Ain't nobody saying nothing about Oprah. Russell wore fat farm shit in every fucking ad that was in the source. Nobody said nothing to Russell. But when Benzino do it, it's a fucking problem. Why, would, why wouldn't, if I'm part of a magazine, I got a rap group, and I should be a part of hip-hop whether you like my music or not. Mm. I don't give a fuck about that. I, I've been a part of hip-hop since 11 years old and know more about it than my... and, and been involved in, 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 in a lot of ways. So why can't my rap group get an ad or two? Mm. Let, let me tell you what happened. So... Dave found the source with three guys, college guys, right? And I'm not, you know, because the story's been told so many times, I'm just going to get to the, to the meat of it. Me and Dave forged a friendship. He was a kid from Harvard, and, 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 and I would go fuck with him in Cambridge just to get away from the hood, smoke weed. Jay Schechter was his roommate. I used to, like, steal Jay's weed in his drawer and shit. Mm -hmm. Jay really didn't like niggas, I could tell, you know what I'm saying? Ivy League kid, you know what I'm saying? He had a rap group, BMOC. I was like, get the fuck out of here with that. Mm -hmm. It just wasn't Eminem. The Beastie Boys, I wasn't like that. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel that way from the Beastie Boys. How I felt about this Eminem shit, I didn't feel that way about the Beastie Boys. Why not? The Beastie, because it was, the Beastie Boys were organically introduced to our culture. They wasn't forced. They didn't get special privileges. It was like, they was like, with, just like with everybody else. Run, why, why do you Houdini. Feel, why do you feel M was forced? He, he, because 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 MTV and a lot of the major companies wasn't fucking with the rest of hip hop the way they was fucking with M, and they wasn't giving people the chances they was giving M. Everything is about perception. If you're the only fucking rapper damn near on there with your videos being played all all the time, at that time MTV is looked upon even in the hood like, oh, if you make it to MTV, you're fucking that's it. Right. VH wasn't wasn't popping, and we knew MTV was over BET. Like so, like the the perception was that, like, oh shit, if you get to MTV, I've made it. Well, he he made it as soon as he came. Mm. Right? That that, you know, that was that's not fair. In the source, in the source, niggas like in the source, my thing is niggas paid their dues. <laughs> Why you know what I'm saying? But you feel like he didn't pay his dues? Again, I feel like you targeting the artist when it's the people. I, I don't who I don't to think he paid his dues. I don't think he paid his dues to hop up. To, to get MTV that quick. Yo, he was... You don't think he... Because it, it was his talent? He was just dope? We damn, told, damn, we, damn. So there's no nigga doing... There's no nigga like that, then? With, and where's the niggas' videos on MTV? Roy <laughs> Hamilton. There's no niggas that hot, then? I mean, we are we that bad? Roy Hamilton. No. That's, Who? That's, Roy Hamilton is what you're discussing. Roy Hamilton is the guy who gave Elvis Presley his singing style. But Roy Hamilton never saw the light that Elvis Presley saw. And a lot of people had issues with that. Eminem definitely got Elvis Presley treatment. That's not a lie. That's, there's nothing inaccurate about him being able to jump the line because he Ooh, was white and because he was, seen as, he, because he was seen as a savior. There's nothing inaccurate about that. He got covers. He got attention. He said that in his own rap. He, got, he said that everybody knows that. It's, yeah. not, it's, not, it's, not a, it's not a secret. And, and the reason that happened is because, again, you know, Hip hop at that point, the, the the powers that be are looking at it like, okay, well, well, it's a black audience, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it's a smaller audience because not everybody was listening to hip hop. There's still a big black part that even wasn't fucking with hip hop. Right. But they're looking at like, yo, these all these white kids, and they outnumber us, like three, four to one. Like you know what I'm saying? There's 200 million, 
36 million black people, 200 million white people. So automatically they're thinking numbers. We got to get to these white people that the ones who don't fuck with niggas. Hip hop was introduced through Eminem to white people who don't fuck with niggas. And I had a problem with that. Right. I had a problem. But, and, but and you know why what? did you, you have? Know, but Maybe. why did you have a problem? Because with man, that? that's just Zeno, man. That's just me. <laughs> I can't even explain it because I know I'm. It's, no, I'm it's, e it's easily. Hold on, hold on. I'm, it's yeah. easily explained. It's easily if you if I can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's easily explained. Comes from a background where he's used to seeing black people being treated a certain kind way, of way, and he didn't appreciate the privilege. And he wanted to have. And this is just me. If I'm wrong, he can he can correct me. He's sitting right there. They ain't been wrong so when far. When he sees hip hop, he sees something that he wants to belong to the people who created it. He is something that he doesn't want to necessarily have to share with someone no, else. No, 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 no. Hold up, Mac. Let me finish it. Let me finish okay, it. Okay, okay, okay. Something he doesn't necessarily want to have to share with someone else who he feels that hasn't doesn't have respect for Good it. Culture. Then come up in it, doesn't appreciate it the right way, and is ultimately going to use it and abuse it. Okay. For, uh, for 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 their own gain, right. and not give back. Thomas Crawford, right there. <laughs> Thomas Crawford, shit, right there. See, because I can't say it like that. See, Mech has always had a mind. Like everybody at the source has amazing had amazing minds. The source, right. when everybody that came through there, and they're doing amazing shit now. A lot of the people that came through the doors are doing it as Mecca is now. Like amazing minds, black young minds, and white minds, and Asian minds and Spanish minds. It was a great mix of people. And, and I'm not up there. I was fucking with all of them. I wasn't the bad guy up there. See, Dave was the hard one. And I'm not trying to throw Dave under the bus, but people would come to me. Hey, Zeno, you think you could talk to Dave? Hey, Zeno, you think? I wasn't up there all the time. I didn't even have an office. Hmm. I didn't even have an office. I, I hated offices. I came in, you know, there was a couch in Dave's office. I go in that motherfucker and lay up, we smoke, and we powwow, 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 and then I'm off. I'm gone. Mm. And and like, and like, you know, it's sad because, you know, it, it I, I could see where people misconstrued me. And it, listen, it's, I won't say haunted, but I'm trying to find the word. It's, and I don't even want to say affected. But what I will say, it's been a part of my life ever since it happened. Right. Where white people who remember, they so just remember. There's a part, remember, I brought this up early, and I want y'all to don't forget, there's a part of America that just don't see black people. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe as years go on, the younger, the younger, as they have, the younger kids, hey, my, black people are cool, you know, maybe they're going to change, they're going to change it. But the bottom line is, you know, that counts, that matters. So they're going to fuck with Eminem, and their fans are, gonna, are always going to be like, we have the best rapper. Right. Fuck y'all. But in turn, you don't think that those same kids that got introduced to hip hop through Eminem yes. were supporting 50 Cent? And who else? And that's it. It stops there. That's it. See, before hip hop made it to where everybody got supported. That's my point. Um, math, everybody got supported back in the day with everybody. All the white kids was getting everybody's shit. Because there was some dope shit that it's like, yo, these niggas this. Like, but now it's like, yeah, okay, Eminem says 50, so 50's cool. Eminem says uh, Royce Royce is cool. Eminem says, and then once they're not fucking with him no more, the white people turn on them. Look, mm -hmm. Royce, Royce sold some shit with Eminem, did a collaboration with Eminem, they sold so many millions. This nigga come out with his own motherfucking shit and sold like 10,000 the first week. That means that all the millions of white people that bought Eminem with him and was cheering him said, get the fuck out of here, nigga. Don't be mad you know at him. No, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm necessarily not mad. No, and, and you have a good point. Because they're like, as a, as a rap fan, they're just too out of order. Like, as rap fans, we don't do that. Right. We don't do that. It's not that serious. Like, people be like, that's why I'm in that, like, my nigga, like, see, they're doing it as, because it's not necessarily getting at me, it's getting at black people. See, y'all don't understand, when these white people say shit about me, they're saying it really about black people, it's not me. Just like how Eminem is the figurehead, I'm the figurehead too, to them. You know, because them, they figure like, yo, how come white, people call me a racist, a black man can't be a racist. It's impossible. Right. No. And that's what they don't understand. No, I'm not a racist anyways. Again, my mother taught me to love everybody. I love every, I, I teach my kids to love everybody. That's not the point. But I do know a racist white boy when I see him or a racist white woman when I see him. And that does, yeah, I, I don't got to be sitting there and it takes me too long. I know what the fuck it is. I, I, I still go through it. Every time you go through a hotel, or a, so you go through it. 
you know that once you start doing shit, you start getting some money, and you start getting into into their world, you start seeing that shit. Yeah, I, I was exposed to that early. Beverly Hills Hotel going, yeah, the hotel with half my hair braided out, like they looking at me. Do you know how many times I got kicked off of airplanes in first class? Um, excuse me, can I see it? No, you can't see my shit. This is my fucking seat right here. Like, you know what I'm saying? Get off, sir. Oh, there was that shit. If the, if the internet was out back then, y'all really see some I, shit. I get it. And I, I get it because I, I complained about that on the show. Like, when I go on vacation certain places, I look around and I just be like, you know, if this was get out, I'm finished. <laughs> I'm finished. I'm surrounded right now. And it would make me uncomfortable because I feel like everybody would be watching to see what uh, is he doing. Right. And then, some, you know, sometimes I use it in my favor. You know, I, you know, if I'm in shape, I take off my shirt. <laughs> make them yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now all your women are staring at me. You know what I mean? Like, I like that. Yeah, you know that saying? was hard. I'm going to use that one. I like that. Yeah. So, but I, but I get that because I, I feel that. And then there's, there's the people that's like, do you belong here? You know what I mean? Here's here's where it went left. Here's when you went left. Hold on, okay. hold on. I want to bring up this one situation uh -huh. where one of the dads of like a, a family swam across the pool to me where I was sitting oh, and God. asked me um, if I was famous. That's the only way you could be there. <laughs> <laughs> and that shit was like, I mean, I am famous, right? But. But, but you it's know like, what? See, you're more. But you're the more, way that he said it I was like, that. like, so that's the only way you think I would be oh, right. You here. worse you know than me because I, mean? I didn't know that. So then now I'm mad at all the white boys that came to me and said, "Yo, you famous?" I didn't think that. I'd be like, "Yeah, I did a little something." You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. But see, I didn't think that. Right. See, 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 see. What, what white people got to understand: if you love me, I love you. Period. If you fuck with me, I fuck with, with you. you. Yeah. There is no racism. Right. Like we're like this. I'm, and I can speak for a, a, the majority right. of black people. Right. There's no fucking racism. You can already see we're not killing y'all. We killing us. So how much do we really hate y'all? There's no hate there. It's just that we. It's just that we. We've been through so much to where any little thing. You know, some yeah, people worse than others. Trauma. It's trauma, man. It's trauma. But we all call, we are calling for accountability as people. Though. Yeah, and I agree. We all calling mean? for accountability. And I agree with that. Well, well, that, that you don't need if, hate. I'm not a fucking If I got any like, ill feelings, come it, on, it man. comes from the white officers that, since I was 14 years old, was running down on me like I was a grown man and manhandling. Math. Next time someone yeah. asks you in those in those situations, are you famous? Look at them and go, Are you? Is that why you're here? Are you here because of your fame? No, I'm not here because of my fame either. Mm -hmm. I didn't nah, know you had to be famous to, to be Subscribe, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I got a question though, but between you two fellas. So you being the CEO of a publication, mm -hmm. I'm the director of marketing and advertising for a publication myself, yeah. right? Yeah. And I learned from that foundation, right? We learned from the sources. I want to know what it was like from your perspective, Mecca being an employee of the source. And as far as the climate mm -hmm. within that building at the time when you were working there, mm -hmm. from your perspective as an employee, and after you go, I would like to know what your perspective was as a CEO. Oh hell yeah, being there. Oh, he yeah. should probably go first. first. No, I want you to go first. No, I go first. You, you specifically, want me to no, go? No, I first? want him to go. Okay, first. okay, okay. Okay, yeah. okay. it was it was pretty bad. It was pretty bad. We the most and at the time I was, at the time I was a circulation coordinator, so I wasn't a writer. I only wrote freelance. Right. Um, which means I wasn't an editor or anything like that. I was assigned stories by other people. Um, the climate pretty much was we as employees are being forced into this war that we don't want to be a part of. Because well, that was the Eminem thing. Yeah. And that's what that's what he's but that wasn't about. the whole No, no, you're no, saying no. the whole time I just want to know the that when you oh, oh, that that the oh, no, no, no. Is, thing. Yeah, is that what you wanted to know? But that was the yeah. that wasn't that, the whole time. No, no, no of no, course no, not. No. <laughs> and I've I've spoken on right. this before. Right. Overall, the source was Nirvana for a hip hop head. If you, we, we stayed extra, we stayed after hours and we got there early because it was just a place to be. It wasn't even about the work at that point. Everybody worked and did their job. But if you had to be there at nine to five, sometimes you show up 8.30 and we could be there all night. You might leave at 9 p.m. just because you, we were having such 
a time. Yeah, y'all get, records, y'all get albums early. Yeah, y'all get all types of that. videos that's, early, that's, albums tickets early. Tickets to concerts. Come on, man. There's, there's, there's a whole like, box in, in, in the whole box in the office. on time. Yeah. Never, mm. never missed. There's, there's a mm. whole box in the office yeah. with just swag that you can just have. Like there's t-shirts, hats. We we the 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 the, the latest <laughs> in black fashion would be in the in the fashion department, and if you borrowed clothes for a shoot and the place didn't want them back, they were just there. And what about all the bad chicks coming to the office? What about that? that? Nobody cared about me at this, you know. I was, but I'm just I was saying, in, I was in, I was we had we had to like, come through that bitch. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. 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 Right. There's money everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you was, sound like the Wolf of Wall Street, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. No, 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 no. I mean, I mean not, was? Not what? Far Are you kidding me? Not not far far music everywhere, weed, every. I mean, listen, women. You know what I'm saying? I bought everybody gold, fucking diamond sauce chains and charm bracelets, real shit. Before you ask, I never got one. real shit. Yeah. But I don't know why you didn't make. I'm not gonna because I wasn't. I wasn't. Uh, I wasn't. I was a circulation coordinator. I worked because you were with Kim, Jeremy. I worked That's under right. Jay Mill. That's I, right. It was see, a completely J- different. Jay Mill. See, okay, now Jay Mill out of everybody in the source was Jay Mill was white. Mm-hmm. So Jay Mill and he was like um, Christian. I believe so. Yeah, you know what I mean. So he was he was real conservative. Mm-hmm. He was under him, where everything else is Animal House. Yeah. Like first of all, a fucking office like XXL's office is probably like that because the people that own XXL at the time they own. Failed and stream, golf magazine, fishing, all this shit that had nothing to do with hip hop. Right, right. They seen us and said, hey, we can publish it. You know what I'm saying? Elliot, come on over here. You know what I'm saying? Elliot ran over there. Okay, yes, yes, yes. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and like, I don't fault Elliot because shit, mm-hmm. they probably gave him more money, like whatever it was. Right. I doubt it because the way we was doing it, I probably would have been like, hey, Elliot, we're going to match you. Like, money wasn't no issue for us. Niggas was like, you could come in. We, wasn't, we didn't care about hours. Like niggas would come, come and go. Like that was the best fucking job you could ever have and get paid for. Mm. You know what I'm saying? We on Park Ave, we on Broadway. You right in the mecca. What else could? What else dream job you could want? Coming out of college, or you know, even not even going to college, but to work for the Source magazine at that time. Mm. But when did it turn left, mecca, as an employee? It was. It was the Eminem situation. It was no. Excuse me. I was I was a different generation from the first time it went left. First time it went left was in '94, which I still heard about when all the writers walked. When well, I can tell you about that one. Eight writers walked mm-hmm. out. Yeah, you know, I got that one. Editorial. You had a Let me tell them about that. You had a writer strike. So let me tell you about that. Had a strike. Right. They walked out. Let me out. tell you about this goofy ass shit. <laughs> but, but again, mm-hmm. again, we talking. In no disrespect, nobody. You know, editors and journalists, they're different people, bro. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. They different people, bro. Told they, you. They sensitive, they just so integrity and so, my nigga, like, everybody's fucking eating, just relax. Like, you know, yeah, everybody's eating, it could right. be worse. Like, me it? and Dave forged a friendship. Mm-hmm. Like, the first year up until then, I didn't have nothing to do with the source other than, okay, um, I got locked up one year and then um, um, for like six months and Dave stayed at my apartment. And he was getting the magazine. This is when they was in black and white. Did y'all see the black and white ones, the yeah. slick rig joints? Yep. So yeah, so he, you know, he stayed there because he didn't want to go back to DC. So we stayed this summer. You know, I let him use my apartment. And I basically gave Dave the key to the hood to go over there and get Skippy Whites and niggas fuck with him. Like, so Dave was like really one of the only white kids that niggas was really fucking with, you know what I'm saying, around that time. Right. So um us as RSO, we we got signed. First of all, we've been we're, 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 we're the biggest group in Boston at the time, all right? We got signed to Tommy Boy Records and had a dope song. We got sued by police and some shit happened because of the song. We was talking about cop can- Some dumb shit lost. We got signed by Flavor Unit. Queen Latifah signed us, right? Mm. Queen Latifah signed us after that. Wow. Flavor Unit? Flavor Unit, yeah. Wow. I used to go over there right to the firehouse across there, stay at the, um. it's not there no more, right? You got the holiday, it was the days in. Right at the right at the Holland Tunnel, we stayed at the Days Inn. The, the, the offices was the firehouse in Jersey, right there in Jersey City, mm. and we were signed. If you go back, they had Roll With The Flavor, we on it. RSO, the only Boston group, everybody else was from Jersey. Might have been somebody from New York. So, um, I got an ill Freddie Fox story, too, to tell. Mm. I'm going to tell on here, too. Right. Bumpy Knuckles, my brother, but yeah. I got it. Because Bumpy, Bumpy. Bumpy was signed, too, at the time. Right. But... All right, and that's how I did a song with Pop through Bumpy, but I'm gonna go back to that. So, you know, like, 
my shit was, Dave got some friends, I'm in the streets, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm doing mad numbers in the streets with schnapps, and I'm fucking with the shower pot Jamaicans. I'm getting money in Boston. Like, you know what I'm saying? One thing about me, say I'm from, I'm from Four Corners, yeah. and everybody from old Boston, new Boston, maybe not the young kids, but their fathers and uncles had to tell them. Like, as far as a hustler, oh, man, crack, heroin, coke, pills, everything. Like, I was out there 24 fucking seven. Like, I was one of the Boston niggas that the Boston niggas came and got their shit from. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, because my father was big, and when he went to fucking the feds, I got all, the, all his plugs. So, you know what I'm saying? So, so you know... We've been signed, Steve Stout signed us to RCA when DJ Clue was an intern. He was an intern. DJ Clue was an intern. Steve Stout's intern at RCA, and we got signed to an EP deal. We got all this shit, right? It never been in the source up until then. So I'm like, it's, it's time now. We need to get our article in the source, you know what I'm saying? Now, I didn't own it, nothing. It was, you know, this, these are the Dave and his college buddies, you know. They didn't like us. Because Dave has some wild niggas from Boston. They wanted Dave to be with them. Hey, come on, Dave. Hey, come on. Dave was like, Dave grew up in D.C. around niggas. So Dave really wasn't failing them. Dave was fucking with us. Mm. You know, I used to go up to the office and like how we said, see T-shirts, take T-shirts. Hey, man, he took my T-shirt. You know, it was like stupid shit. Like, it ain't that serious, bro. Like, <laughs> like for real. This is what y'all don't like me for. Like, come uh. on, man. Like, what the fuck, bro? So... At that time, college niggas always thought they was just better than street niggas. And that's how I took it with them. They always thought they were smarter, better. So, you know, I didn't fuck with them niggas either. You know what I'm saying? They knew not to fuck with me. You know what I'm saying? Because they was the ones that was keeping the destiny. I'm, I'm trying to be cool. I'm cool with a white Jewish kid going to Harvard. Why wouldn't I be able to be cool with y'all? And a couple of them were black. Because they're the ones that know. See, you got a whole bunch of niggas in, in this country who think they better than street niggas. Mm. And that's always been like that. And that's how that was. So, okay, but I, again, I wasn't involved with the source. 94 came, Bones Malone, they send the nigga down to come do the mat. Dave sends the nigga, because the editors don't want to do the fucking story. They don't want to do the story on the RSO. I'm like, ain't this a bitch? So I ain't saying nothing at this point. They got a little thing. I called up there like, yo, listen, man. I'll explain that in a second. They, but they didn't want to do the story. You know what right. I'm saying? Again, we've been signed to three labels. And Dave's my man, who was really the primary owner, right? I'm calling up to like, I'm going to fuck y'all niggas up. You know what I'm saying? I'm, at this point, it's like, yo, this is disrespectful. Like, y'all don't like us personally. Right. Fuck how you think if we deserve, because you think we're not a good rap group, but you think we're for Boston, we'll go up there and fuck you niggas up. Like that. You know what I'm saying? Because it didn't come out, it didn't start like that. Mm -hmm. But it's like, After oh, yeah, oh y'all niggas don't like us? We will fuck you niggas up. Yeah. So, them niggas... <laughs> Did a whole fucking, first of all, we had RCA records. These niggas come up and serve me a summons while it's press day. The only reason they got up there because, because they used it. Hey, we're press day. We, they came up there in front of all the, the fucking executives of RCA at press day, in different press, and, and, and gave me a summons. For what? We threw them niggas through the glass door and everything. Broke the glass. We got, we got dropped from RCA because of that shit. Beat the shit out of them niggas. But, but what was the summons for? I don't know. <laughs> okay. I'm be honest. It, as soon as they brought that shit out, niggas was jumping over tables, and we got it. Look at it, bro, bro. We broke the whole glass shit up at all. Man, that was mm -hmm. it. They got us up out of it. We lost that deal because of these niggas. Right. Now everybody you lost that deal because you threw niggas through a glass window <laughs> in front of niggas. That's why you lost the deal. Mm -hmm. But you don't think that we was triggered? Nah, I know you was triggered. But you don't you, think that that was but, just because 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 they lied. You could have put the safety but on they, and be like, we're gonna see them niggas but when they we're lied, not but, here. But they lied, but they lied and and and, and, and they wasn't supposed to be we wasn't fucking with them. It was already established. Dave's like, look, fuck that. Because they're saying, look, you know, Dave's getting them record deals and Dave's getting them. We were serious about our music. You know, Kevin Weeks came down, not Kevin Weeks, Kevin from Tommy Boy came down and was like, yo, these niggas is dope. We opened up from Tommy Boy, you know, like we killing shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't nothing whack about us. Mm. Like, you know, so so we got signed to a fucking single deal. And then Flavor Unit signed to a single deal with videos. And then after that, and then, look, Easy, Easy, we had two meetings with Easy. Like, Easy, Tom Wally, who's a, who's a lawyer of two parts of state, Easy, I met with Easy twice. I met him at the Source magazine. He's like, yo, I fuck with y'all. Because Tom Silverman dropped us because we got 
so because of the record, the cop killer record it was called Wonder Chamber. He said it was cop ki- prov- provoking cop killing. We got dropped from the label. So Easy was gonna sign us. We got the contracts and everything, math, right? I mean, go through everything. This is like about three weeks. The, um, Jerry Heller and Dave are going back and forth. I met Easy twice. I met him, the, the, the Samoan niggas, and this Israeli nigga that had a little baby Mac in his motherfucking um, trench coat. He had a short trench. Mm. Bro, like, the shit was crazy, right? Met him again at the St. Regis Hotel. It was just me, Easy, and Dave, and just the nigga, Mike Klein, which now I knew he was from the Jewish Defense League watching the movie, right? right? So that's who Jerry Heller put on him, one of them Israeli niggas from, mm-hmm. from Israel. Right. He was no joke. So <laughs> Easy checks in the hospital. We wait, we just waiting now. Tamika and them at the same time are signing Bone Thugs. And Easy's like, yo, I'm signing y'all. And Tamika and Yella signing Bone Thugs. This is gonna be the new Ruthless. And we, man, we going crazy now. This is our first album deal. Our first album deal. Like this nigga, you know what I'm saying? Like this is so big for us, nigga. We, we done lost niggas, all kind of shit. And we getting an album deal from Easy E. Like it's one of our motherfucking heroes, nigga. Right. The nigga goes to see the sign now. We makes a song. I, I, I we didn't. It was an email. I mailed him the song to the hospital. He had been there a week now. I mailed him the song. He said he had a, a box in there. The song was called "There'll Be Some." We we sampled Rogers that and some shit from the. But long story short, he liked the song. It was like some West Coast shit because we was on some West Coast shit too. It was East Coast, West Coast, Boston, and everything. Right. So so. Three nights before he passed, I'm talking to him. Now, this, every, every other night he was sounding right. I must talk to him like four times while he was in the hospital. This time he was like, ah. And I was like, damn. He said he had bronchitis. I was like, oh, okay, you're going to be all right. You just got the flu. You know, niggas was catching the flu back then. It was cool. The flu wasn't no worry. Like, this was, yeah, I got the flu. And they going to fuck that up the flu. Yeah. This was the thing about dying. Even AIDS. AIDS had just came. And it, 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 you, you, niggas wasn't, you didn't think niggas was dying like, from AIDS, so, right. so I didn't even cross my mind. Nobody thought, I didn't think that shit. Right. And then I never, I swear to God, man, to Mary, oh, I love you. I'm in a sub, We, me and my man Hurst, we eat in a sub, at Nicholas Sub in Rosendale, sub shop. Dave called me and said, yo, he's gone. Man, I went out back, threw up my sub. I'm thinking at this point, like, yo, this is just like a curse or whatever, man, went back. That was fucked up, but, but, but we wind it, Oh, we never got the deal. Tamika mm. didn't honor the contract. We was getting a buck fifty for our first album, and she didn't. We ended up signing to the Jay Prince, moved to Texas, but rewind it though. Like all these writers now quit from Dave and, and the other three owners and said Dave stepped down because you Dave got the, the, the Dave ended up writing the fucking article himself. Mm. It was Bones, an album review. You know what I'm saying yeah, in a fucking album review. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm mm. saying. Listen. How many mics if I get? wanted to put my balls on, on you know what I'm saying, on the cover the at that point, like, like, and like I could have, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that's how Whoa. I felt. I didn't Whoa. do that. Right. Yeah, but it, it didn't. Listen, listen, my thing is look, I never believed in the mic system like that the way everybody else does because what makes us separate and individuals from 8 billion people is the power to pick what the fuck we want to pick. Right. I'm not going to fucking listen to the, go listen, like, yo, because they pick five mics and I'm not going for that because they don't live like I live. They don't do the music that I do. They are them. Right. Even like, I never, when, when, when they would go back and do the five mic shit, I wouldn't go back there. But you called yourself the five mic giver. I, mm-hmm. One of the coldest lines in the history of motherfucking <laughs> this <way. laughs> Yeah, you fucking right, because everything had to go through the z at the end of the day. Right. It was my business, and I'm a street nigga. It's just like, you know, my thing is like, my like like my thing is like... You do realize you just contradicted anything you just nah, said. No, but listen, but that's cool, because like, cause sometimes, <laughs> sometimes in life you got to contradict, because right. I'm going to be honest, like being a street nigga ain't easy. Like, I didn't know nothing about magazine or nothing. When them niggas all said Dave stepped down, Dave was like, get the fuck out of here. Fired everybody. Paid off the rest of them niggas and said, Z, you want to be half and half? Yeah, fuck it, let's go half and half. Ma- the magazine wasn't making no money in 94. I, I was making all the money. <laughs> the Z-ster, yeah, me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I was, yeah. The magazine didn't start making money until like 98. 
You know what I'm saying? I was making big street money way before the fucking source. Right. You know what I'm saying? Well, whatever the fuck they was doing, I wasn't like, yeah, I want to invest here. I didn't think, look, that's y'all shit. I don't, I don't rock with these niggas, these type of niggas. Dave, me and you rock, and that's cool. I support you. You my brother. I support you. Right. I don't fuck with them niggas. I don't. I, I never came around them niggas. Right. Let them niggas do their job. But I'm a rap group. Dave's my man. You know what I'm saying? And we deserved it. And everybody does that. We fucking deserved and it. Be honest. Everybody why wouldn't? Why, but, but why wouldn't? What, Again, we Tommy Boy, RCA, and Flavor Unit, three fucking labels. We don't deserve a fucking article in my man's magazine. That I that look, at the end of the day, the magazine wasn't started by those three dudes. The magazine was started in a radio station that me, Jeff, two times my DJ, and me co-hosting Dave every hour. That's where the one piece of page. So in technicality, Jay injected them wasn't around. Because when I came around Harvard, Jay would get the fuck out of there anyways. I didn't like Jay. I didn't like James. I didn't like none of them niggas. Mm. Yeah, I like none of them niggas, and, 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 and yeah, I didn't, mm. and they didn't like me. Dave was like, I fuck with Dave, you know what I'm saying, that was it. You know what I'm saying, but I never, I never got in the way of they, they mix until they try to play me. How the fuck y'all gonna, how, how come I can't get in the magazine, me and my niggas? It wasn't, it wasn't getting in the magazine that caused them to walk out, though. I wouldn't give a fuck because we fired everybody, it we went on, mic. and we ended up making more money than ever. Mic. So, was, you know what I'm saying, the see review, you later. The review, you know I mean? adios, the review for the album was... Three and a half mics. And I believe Dave it, wrote it himself, rewrote it, and added an extra mic see, to the review. See, niggas be taking mics too serious. I'm like, who gives a fuck? I don't give a fuck. Like, my God. Yo, that oh, shit was bullshit. like, yeah, that shit was like the. Bullshit. Nah, that yeah. shit was like the. Nah, son. Y'all niggas is taking mics too if serious. If I picked man, up a source, it ain't that serious. If I bro. picked up a source and that shit said five mics. It's 2023. It, it could have been. Then it wasn't. It could have been MC Rainbow hit Rainbow Head. I would have I would have listened <laughs> the to mics the, was a, the, the mics. The mics, the mics was a bite. And I'm not downplaying it because it, it, it's, it's the shit though. It's a right. But, but we got that from Rolling Stone. Rolling Stone did that first. Mm. So it's not nothing new. I just never believed in rating system because I see the people who's rating them. Mm. I'm in the back door and I'm like, oh, y'all niggas is rating him? How the fuck would he know what I like? Mm. We don't even live the same. Our, our ethics, our way we look at things ain't the same. It's not bad. And I'm not dissing the way you are. Again, that's the college street nigga separation. Right. We're not the same. Right. One, one, two brothers. One goes to college, Ivy League. One's out here going in and out of jail. Ten, 20 years later, they're at the cookout. These niggas are not the fucking same. And that's right. our culture, bro. And I just happened to come from that side. Here's, I, here's, I, didn't go to, I didn't go to the Ivy League. Here's part of the problem. Part of the problem. Because he's not wrong. No, he's not. I don't he's see not. how I could be. No, you're not wrong. <laughs> and you're I, not that's, wrong. And but that's what, probably what we, why Reasonable Doubt had to get re-reviewed. But what we lack here... Uh, <laughs> yeah. They was going to give Jeezy's first <laughs> album three and Little so Brother fat. four and a half. <laughs> so like, I'm like, but, they didn't under, but see, but then me, me too. See, this is where it's fucked up with trying to rate mics and trying to be the nigga that's, I'm the mic rater. Nobody should be rating no fucking mics because again, what you like is what you like, nigga. Right. Like, what the fuck, bro? Whatever you like, I might not, that's what makes eight billion people separate. Do we all want to be followers and fucking trend followers and followers and fuck all that, man. Like what you like, you right. know what I'm saying? Like, nigga, don't, don't go by no system. Go out there and fucking like, because you might be deterred. Most of these people right now are robots. They're fucking programmed to like shit. That's what these people, the computer is being used on a lot of these motherfuckers to program them to buy what the fuck they want to buy. That's the radio station. And look, and look, and that's how, see, that's see, everybody, again, again, and, and, and I like to, you know, interject, but like, it, it wasn't that serious to me because, okay, yeah, yeah, but to me personally, it's like, again, like, the dude that does the top five thing at Billboard, this is a probably some dude, probably never been around. And never he got himself a good job because he went most most of the ones who got the good they all went to college. A mountain Col climb open college is a different control. life, bro. Don't so do that. you don't you don't you don't, <laughs> don't you do listen that. to shit, but hip hop is more of a failing to where you live in it. And now, now because of cultures and generations, everybody's living it. Indian, white, black, blue, whatever. So they're they're really officially in it now because that's that's their thing. But guess what? Powers that be don't want it to be pop music and make all that money. Niggas are, still, niggas are still fucked up out here. And that's, that's what I was fighting against back then. It, it, I just want more money to come to us. Mm. I want more of these trillions of dollars that, 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 that come to us. 
Because at one point we was getting it all right before it turned to trillions. Once it turns trillions, because this was a plot, they planned this. They had to get an Eminem. Who's they? The powers that be, the, the guys that run the, um, all, the, all the major media co corporations. Like they don't ever think that these niggas don't sit in barbershops or meetings and everything. Their influence is so powerful, they have to be calculated. I mean, come on, they're not, if I could figure that out, you think they, they're not doing it? That's obvious, it's common sense. You know, once you control that, you control the masses. We were so big that, you know, we, we was controlling the masses. You see, check this out, right? The source said hip hop, music, politics, and like, I had to bring that up against the Eminem. I had to say that if I didn't, then that's not hip hop. See yeah. what I'm saying? I, I didn't come in through a college point of view. I came in through as a nigga. And, but that's what hip hop, and that's what made the source successful and not that. XXL because Benzino was in there. Somebody who wasn't college <laughs> and all that. Somebody who came in there. I respect it. I respect it. I respect it. I respect it. But but that's not what hip hop came from. That's not what that's not hip hop came from the dirt, the streets, and niggas who didn't have niggas didn't who didn't have the privilege to go to college. Stop, 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 stop. Niggas hate that. Number one, he's not taking shots at me. I didn't no, go to not college. at all, Mecca. Because man, I was you didn't home, go to I my kids to go Zeno, to college. Zeno, hold on a second, nigga. This nigga I lied was, to us. I was homeless after nigga high school. What the fuck are you talking? I about? fucked with Mecca when Mecca was at you the school. I never gave you a red. Man, <laughs> you can't say we didn't fuck with each other when we was at the school. If don't don't pay. If I start talking, if I start talking, I would see Mecca. What up, Mecca? Like it would always be like always. I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't would disclude Mac. I wouldn't. Never. Never. I never went to college. Never. I was homeless when I got that job. What? Nigga, I started and interning now hard because magazine. I had no home. I, I told you this when we did chastity. Yeah. Who do you? Who, who do you think? Who do you think okayed you from intern to, to paycheck? Then who do you think it had to go by? Yeah, it had to go by the Zista. All day, every let day. Me, let me, let me, yeah, let me, my nigga. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that means that that means I seen something in you. Let me see. Let me yeah. say, let me say a couple of things. Yeah. Let me say a couple of things. Number mm. one, the reason why journalists stay away from artists, the reason why you may have gotten the feeling that they didn't like you, is because there's a thing called integrity and a distance. What I need to do as a journalist is not start liking right. you as a person. You're right. If I start liking you as You're a right. person, it sways my judgment. And what I'm supposed to do, and I'm no longer objective <laughs> with your music. Mm. If I if if I like you as a person, you can hand me something that's mid, right. and I'ma still be like, nah. And it's natural. You can't fight it. That's it, why it the just source happens. is great. That's why you, you see that. It's why that's you why the stay source away. You see how serious he is about that. You see the way. Remember Look. when we first sat down with Nori? That's real shit. And I, what was the first thing Nori said? Me and him had a discussion about. I told him the first thing I told you is I'm not a fan of yours. <laughs> you, said that talking, to, you said that's not on the show but I said it to him when I interviewed him I'm not your fan I'm not a fan of yours I'm here to do a job we can be cool after the job is done but as but I'm you, sitting you here like with T-O-N-Y you, that's not the point I what like the this. Fuck? Did I say I <laughs> Did I say like, I don't? So you I, see the separation? Did I say I didn't you like the song? I get it now. He never said. I man, never said I didn't oh, like oh, the song. Oh, oh. You oh. turned the you took the song from the artist. I told him I'm not your fan. I'm a fan of this song. I'm a fan of this album. I'm a fan of this group. But if I start, if I lose my objectivity, it ruins what I'm supposed to be doing. But all you knew him is as. A artist. Which is why when we get, when he invites me out to dinner or he wants to meet up in Lincoln, have me come to the studio, I say no. Did you, like Did you like TONY? Did you like TONY? Yeah, friends with a lot of niggas. Then that you a like fan of his You're music, not bro. a journalist. That's just how it works. You're not a journalist. That's just how it works. You're not a journalist. You don't understand. <laughs> Yeah, so you exactly. see how I was then, because this is you see how Mecca acts. Yeah. That's all of them. Because yeah. because look at look at the reason they walked up because they said they broke the integrity, integrity. of the we magazine. Now no longer have integrity by being your friend. By being my fuck. <laughs> 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 and they all walked out. They said he had no. And they, they, no. they yeah, you can't yeah. you yeah. can't be friends with niggas. <laughs> you can't be friends. Yo, they sound like is that the, crazy. They said no, no. It's like it's, they sound like 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 um like a group of niggas that would be on Lord of the Rings or some shit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that sounds wow. Like a, the, the druids. Like wait, mega. So did you can't associate <laughs> with your on. nation. Like hold on, hold on. So mega, did you, did you walk out? I wasn't there in '94. 
But he would have. He would have. He would have. Yeah. I was telling you that. This is why I'm not trying to fuck with my music. Oh, this is why. No, this is why this when why. you ask me about your music, I tell you the truth. <laughs> okay, I've never lied. I've never lied. No, no, let me finish. I, because now, now we're talking about integrity. Which I love is something it. I have I a love real it. big thing. When I Math laughs it. and cracks jokes about, yo, Mech, did you get a bag to say this nigga's dope? I don't yeah. laugh about shit like that. I never have. My entire career I can say that. is based <laughs> on my integrity. I, I can co-sign And when that. you question yeah. my integrity, when you allude to the to the fact that but I that's can how be all y'all it's literally Why all I soul. have in this business. It's the only reason anybody ever fall. fucks with me, because they know I don't lie I to them, and they know I can't be brought and sold. If the idea came up that somebody, there was enough money that somebody could hand me to make me say that something was dope or something was whack, I'm finished. And let me give you your flowers. And that's why the source was what it was. Because it had a bunch of guys who are committed like that. Uh-huh. And but to where is that and my ignorant ass, and my, you know, I didn't see that. Mm. And I wouldn't call it ignorance just unfair. You just didn't know. Just but 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 it, but it was unfair. I'm older now, and it was unfair. Yeah. Like, you know, I already put up, you know, like a and, and I didn't want to go in there because because my thing was like, it's like, damn. The reason why th- there was always a divide between street and college is because street niggas don't get accepted by college niggas. It's not the other way around. You know what I'm saying? College niggas get up in there and they listen to NWA and they put the tooth in and the thing, but shit, some sh- gun shit go off. These niggas, <gasps> you know what I'm saying? They yeah. done fainted. You know what I'm saying? So, so, so everybody wants- shit out. But, but, but street <laughs> niggas, <laughs> street niggas like just like the whole swag of how, like how we looked at college niggas is like, yo, that they smart. Yeah. Like, like we respected that. So I respected it, but it just was a divide. And me and Dave's friendship was so strong. Like we was, like we was brothers, like quit. Like me and Dave, he was like my, you know, I've never hung out or been with, me and Dave probably 18 years spoke with each other straight every, since we had the source, 18 years straight every day until the times I was locked up. And even then he, like he would call. But you know, we went through high highs, low lows, get indictments, all kind of shits. You know, all kind of, you know, all kind of shootings, like all kind of hospitals. I mean, me and Dave been through it all. Dave was there when I had no kids. And next thing you know, I have, Dave was supposed to be Corey's godfather. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because, you know, that was my brother. I mean, that, that is my brother, you know. Which is why it makes perfect sense that he lost his objectivity with that album. Makes perfect sense. That's why you're not supposed to be the guy rating your friends. That's why if I like you as a person, I have to send But they wouldn't up. rate it. But so listen, he, listen, he, no, but he, he, he your, your refused to. So you, he's send like, Bone, you send Bones Malone down there because Bones Malone doesn't know you. Because and he can be objective. No, because y'all didn't want to do it. It's they not said, y'all. No. I wasn't on no, that no, staff. No, I'm, I'm saying journalists. I'm saying they didn't want to do it. So Dave said, yo, Bones, what's up? You going to do this? Bones, look, let me tell you what Bones did. Bones came down there. It's funny. Bones comes down there for two days. One of the days I get locked up. You know what I'm saying? Some shit had happened. So, but Bones is with us the whole time. Like when, like when police took me out the car, some shit had happened. Bones was like, oh shit. So, but Bones chill. Bones ended up getting the fuck out of there. No one's heard from Bones in two weeks at the source after that. They told, they threatened Bones or something because Bones was down there to write and then Bones all of a sudden disappeared. Like for weeks. Like he was, you know what I'm saying? Like they was pressuring Bones. Like you better not. It was almost like breaking the picket line. Mm. Because in their letter, they sent that shit to every um, news outlet. That shit was... Every label, every major radio station, this Benzino is a monster and he threatens us and then and, 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 him and Dave and I mean everybody. Like I'm this is this is the beginning of me being blacklisted. The beginning of me being blacklisted. So you gotta realize everything that I've done and everything that was always working upstream. I've always had to work upstream because of this right here. You know what I'm saying? Because these are the people that ultimately go, go, because these are the early people in journalism, and they've ultimately were the ones that helped birth this whole covering hip hop shit. So they, this is all they're gonna do. They're still out there doing that now. So wait, I get it now. These are the guys that were probably fans of Eminem. <laughs> and you felt with all this 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 uh this 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 conflict amongst them that you were up against a representation of those guys. 
That's which, your, which leads that's back an expert in, opinion, which, which runs back into where we kind of left off at. The reason why, although he had a point and he was he was accurate as far as Eminem's coverage and the way Eminem blew up. I was wrong. He for, it for, was for the, the magazine. In. I was wrong. The yeah. messenger. I was wrong. It was the wrong messenger. I was wrong. Mm. I was I was wrong. I should have never done that. I was wrong. That was wrong. That was I, I've done some great shit now, mm-hmm. you know. Because after after this, can we talk some great shit that yeah, I've yeah, done? Yeah, yeah. Because sure, because, sure. because 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 like you know, but that was wrong. My emotions was involved in it. By that time, I was emotionally. We're doing press conferences and then the tape and this. We're, we're in federal court. Like they took us to federal court. Eminem and Interscope took us to federal court for copyright infringement when we put the tape out. So we went to federal court. We won, and they had to pay for our lawyer. But the judge says you can only use because we was gonna put the whole tape out. Just says now you can only use thirty seconds. So when you hit it thirty seconds, it's like nigga, what, what, what? it's like all it's all the niggers and it's just chopped up shit. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And if, if I think we got maybe we put out a thousand of them. So if you if you got that and still wrapped up, that shit one day is gonna be worth something. Because wow. it was uh, he was on the cover with a black eye. See Kim Kim Osorio was the and and, and and I'm the one that hired Kim. You right. know Kim's my sister. Right. Lawsuit and everything after all. That's my sister. I hired Kim. I gave Kim the first woman to be editor in chief at. At the source. Shout out to Kim. The first yeah, editor in chief. I, I did that. Cause and, because and that was a job that was, man, talk about male dominant and ego and what? Like when I when I did that, niggas was mad at me. It was mm. between her and Eric Parker. And, and he, he didn't have a chance game. because he was one of them niggas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He was one of them. The integrity. The integrity. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right. <laughs> see, see, Kim was somebody that could understand advertisement because this is what the journalists didn't understand. If they back there giving niggas two and a half mics and the label that the group came from is paying us a half a million a year in advertisement, it doesn't work good for right, us. Right. They didn't understand you're, you're, you're that. The integrity, man. integrity, it's, it's integrity not <laughs> don't pay the bills. It's not that they didn't understand. You know what I'm saying? It's not that they didn't understand. It's not that they didn't understand. Always understand. They, they were bound by the code. You can't of be the broad. Jewish. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. You're funny. You're funny. You're funny. You're a clever motherfucker. Man, no, because that's the first time I heard that, but he's right. Oh, I'm glad man. you are who you are, Mech, because now the world can see it. There's nothing to matter with because the way you are and the way everybody was at, it, the source wouldn't have been that. But if you didn't have this crazy, wild motherfucker in there, it wouldn't have been what it was. It was a, it was a well, balance, see, man. See, the, the, you know issue, the, issue is, the issue is you brought street tactics into a, into a corporate office. Not just street tactics. No, I'm not, talk, just. I'm, I'm not talking about, right. I didn't say that was all you brought, but I all said right. that's what you definitely brought. You're scaring a bunch of people who are not from the street. I wasn't trying to. That's not the point. No, you was trying. It's not no, the I point. I swear to God. No, when you no, was trying to, God, when you tell somebody you don't fuck them up, you tell somebody you don't fuck them up. You tell somebody you don't fuck them up. You tell somebody you don't fuck them up. I, I, like, once they fuck, like, see, I'm already, like, got this thing, like, I'm trying to make sure that I'm going to make sure that I'm cool enough to be your friend. I'm trying to go out my way. These niggas just didn't fuck with us. Okay. I'm trying to, All right. I'm, like, let me, stop, stop, stop. You see yeah. it. Let me, let me, yeah, let me, you let see me, it, man. Let me, let me say something. Yeah, let me, yeah, let me, yeah, again, let, let me, let me kick something else in here. Let me, let me extend an olive branch. Right. Okay. Two things. Number one, I was never afraid of you. I wasn't trying to scare anybody. That's not the point. Right. You did scare people. Right. Right. But that's that's again not understand. the point. When the results don't right. change, the why is irrelevant. It doesn't matter what you were trying to do. Understand. It matters what right. happened. Okay. Right. And you did shake people up. People who felt like they shouldn't have to deal with that when they come to work. Right. Right. Okay. So now work's a little uncomfortable for certain people. I can understand that. You didn't. You didn't. You <laughs> no, I understand that. You didn't. You didn't scare me. Right. But right. the reason why me and you could be cool right. on a different level is because I wasn't a writer then. And I was never asked to cover you. So it this, was, let, let me finish it. Okay. Let me finish it. You gotta let me I, of course, of course. I, I feel like the same thing happened to me in battle rap for some reason. No, but it's, it's true <laughs> though. This, this, but that's the yeah, separation this, this though. This is how it works. It's, it's, separation. it's the separate. Like Between I told church you. and state, it becomes it a separation. It started when hip hop came with, with, with college <laughs> and streets. Oh, bro, bro, chill out. Let me, let me, let me, let me. The source.com was started, mm-hmm. right? And this is when the internet was brand new. Yeah. Like a lot of people weren't on the net. I was on the net. Shout out to 
Q and Five, shout out to the plague, my crew was right. internet rappers. Mm -hmm. He knew that I was doing my one two on the internet. He knew that I was internet. He was savvy. smart. He was smart. Real mm -hmm. smart. I just knew where I knew what smart. to do. Right, say in Boston, <laughs> there was a there was a, another dude who I was cool with who was in the mailroom. He was one of the main men. His name was E. B. Every yep, round, every shout out to E. B. He in South Carolina now. Sh shout out yep, to E. B. Yep, Good yep. dude, always yep. always a solid dude. Yep. I'll tell you one thing that I I never forget. I was in the back issue closet doing my thing. He comes back there and gets me. It's like, yo, come with me. He goes in the mailroom, gets E. B. <laughs> come with me. <laughs> We go in Dave's office. He sits in Dave's chair <laughs> and proceeds to yell at Dave as, why ain't these two motherfuckers over at thesource.com? Why do you have them doing the shit they're doing and you got this goofy looking shit. motherfucker over here right. running thesource.com? And then he turns around out of nowhere. Mac is a real hip hop nigga. This nigga's out here in the street. This nigga's over here on fucking in front of the I drove by and saw this nigga in front of running record stores and shit. This Bridget nigga, Mega, no, 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 Fat Beats, nigga. Fat, oh, 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 Fat Beats, that's, nigga. that's deep in the hip hop. Nigga. Uh, I see this nigga over here. I ask motherfucker. I remember that. This man, nigga's in front crazy. of this. This nigga's in front I of that. I remember that. Yeah. How come you ain't got him over at the fucking dot com? EB don't need to be doing fucking mail. EB needs to be on the fucking dot com. Why in these motherfuckers at the... Meanwhile, I had no idea this was about to happen. I was just in the back issue closet doing my thing about the circulation coordinator. That was my job. Right. I answered phones. I read mail. I distributed Did, magazines. It wasn't a big paying job. Nah, right. nah. You know I saying? made myself. But when he got to dot com, oh yeah. I never went to the dot com. It never happened. You, you never met? You never went? Never happened. Wait a minute. What never happened? happened. So, so what happened? Because... Dave never because it, no, this is what happened. Never happened. So, so this is the down. But I'm not. I didn't say that story to say it didn't happen. I said that story to say to give you a chance. This is something that he tried to do, what? and it wasn't. It wasn't because I of how he talk. Look at because of how we talk. I'm like, he's, he's. See, I was always good at that. Carlito Rodriguez came right out of jail. Come on, shout Carlito. out to Carlito. Get over here. Come on, Lito. Wasn't nobody gonna, hey, come over here, Lito. Yeah, you can, yo, I write in jail and let me see. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Come on, Lito. You gonna what? Maybe the yo, day he got he, off he was parole. getting the sauce in jail. Maybe the day he, he got, got off parole. Yeah. That, then, that, that part of you threw he made, he made it to he made it to assistant editor in chief. Like to, to editor in chief wow. after Kim. So so from straight from jail. Like like that Before was just, Kim. like I used to see niggas. I used to see the, the great in, 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 in those niggas. Like, like not because Carl, like he said. I didn't, I didn't, Mecca, I didn't know he was in college, not the way he talked like he was, yeah. but, but I'm saying, <laughs> but, but, but I'm saying like, I remember that because that was some spontaneous shit because it's like, we'll sit there, smoke and kick it and then automatically, okay, they'll be good for this. See, I'm always good at that. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and that's what, 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 what was one of, one of my main things at the source. I wasn't, look, once Dave, all that, they were gone, you know, People just had it. We understood the integrity, but you got to understand the advertisement. You know, and then the fucking accountant wears a wire to, to fucking get me locked up. Let's not forget that. You know, so now I'm there. I mean, it's like, you know, you know, the Source magazine has always been them against me. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm yeah. over here with Dave. And yeah, I'm the wild card. When we was getting millions, I mean, it was out of control. I mean, I, mean, I would like. I'm, I'm, how much was the Source making a month? Few million a month. The magazine, the, went, the magazine sold almost almost five hundred thousand copies every month. With, with, with eighty six yeah. ads in it at twenty five thousand in that. God damn! It went, God damn! I got every, some work to do every month. <laughs> <laughs> every every thirty days. It went go every the issue almost month, basically wake went up, gold. Wake up! Wake up! Yeah! yeah. Wow. Wake up! I'm like my nigga, like math. So look, look, so look, me. So I, you know, I'm a hustler. So I never really work, and I ain't got no. So I'm bringing everybody. Fuck it. We all go. There's <laughs> enough money for everybody to have fun. Man. 20, 30 niggas. I'm getting my own tour bus. The Rough Riders tour, yeah, but you're, we getting our own tour bus. You know what I'm saying? Right. I mean, I stayed at the Beverly Hills bungalow like 1,800 a night for like eight months. I just was doing like, I just was, I didn't have no, everything was a blur. Like I, I didn't even, like I never, I never asked Dave to see the books. I never asked Dave to see bank account statements. The source fell, all right, not because of the Eminem thing, not because of Benzino, and because Benzino put ads in the magazine. And 
the integrity. <laughs> I love you, man, for real. Yeah. The, the source fell because David, and I'm glad he mentioned it. Steve Stout, HL with Young Dave, and a couple other guys all had the ideas early that look, this 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 dot com shit's gonna be the next shit. And the advertising's gonna be pumping through here. People are gonna be able to interact. It's not gonna be magazines, that's gonna be old news. So so Dave and then went and got a twelve million dollar loan, which I was told it was nine. Mm. Found out later on it was twelve. And like about a twenty two percent interest rate or something. Mm. So mm. they bet the farm on it. Mm. Yeah. So what happened in, 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 in the early stages of, of, of the dot coms? They all crashed. Dave and them and Steve and them were great minds and still are. I take nothing from some of the greatest minds in hip hop as far as advertising, Dave Mays and Steve Stout. Probably top, top, Dave Mays and Steve Stout. They helped birth that advertising age with hip hop infused. I give them theirs. I give them, I, I, you, know, you know, but they was ahead of their time. And it crashed. I mean, Dave opened up a whole fucking Fifth Ave office. It was like, yo, I want to show you something. I went to the office, like, what the fuck is this? See, yeah. I was against it, because I didn't know about it. Anything I didn't know about, I stayed away from it. Source Hip Hop Hits, sold five million copies, my idea. I negotiated the contract. They offered us a half million. First time I heard Rush, he called me from a Mike Jordan game. They wanted so bad, I came with the idea of a compilation album. This was before the one MTV, now. Right. I came up with this, that we're going to put all the top niggas on the covers and their songs and put it on a compilation and put it out there for the people and call it the Source Hip Hop Hits. Everything. That was all my idea. Def Jam wanted it. They offered us a half a million. Dave, this is when I really, this is my, like my first negotiation. I was like, Dave, let me get this. Waited a week, waited a week. Next thing you know, we got a call from Russell Simmons. Yo, I'm at a Michael Jordan game. And da -da. The next day, we got four and a half million dollars from a nigga on a bike, in a backpack, in a helmet. <laughs> Four and a half fucking million dollars, yo. And I, and I was like, Dave, I was like, okay, you know what I'm saying? I did that, it, it sold five million copies. You know what I'm saying? That's domestic, mm. I don't even know what so it they sold. they made their money like back a couple of times. They still owe me. Like mm. Universal still owes me. Let, me. let me explain what happened. When Jimmy and them took over Universal, all my, look at, cause I got signed to Motown. I was signed to Electro when I got did Rock the Party. You know what I'm saying? And you know, Electra ended up going over the thing. I got signed to um, Restless, which was a part of BMG. That was Warren, Warren G that was on that label when, this is how we, we do, do. Um, Martel, Martel. 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 So, so, you know, I've been on a few labels and, and you know, it was like, when they did a, they did a 50-50 profit share and split with me for the hip hop hits and it went through Surrender. So, that's through Def Jam and Benzino. I'm the president of Surrender. Come to find out, you know, I go and do the EIN. I, I started Surrender in 96. So, so when Jimmy and them took over Universal, the portal, you know about the portal, where your, where your shit is. My name started coming off the portal. My name's supposed to be on the portal all the time because I got shit always coming up. You know what I'm saying? They went in there and physically was taking my name out the portal. I wasn't getting my, um, I wasn't getting my shit. I wasn't getting my just. Your publisher? Roy royalties. Royalties. Mm -hmm. When Jimmy and them was there. To where is that? I probably got six million dollars from Universal for hip hop hits. Let's do the math. They sold five million copies. I got gold plaques and everything for the hip hop hits. And I always put a bonus track. Yeah, Benzino. <laughs> Fuck integrity. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna get a t-shirt. Fuck integrity, baby. Yeah. I put a bonus on each one of them. It was like seven of them that Def Jam. We did eleven because we did deal with after we left Def Jam, but the seven is the one that sold all the albums. Mm. So and it, and it was worldwide. My nigga, they sold you, you would say at nine ninety nine is wholesale times five is fifty million. Y'all only gave me six million, the fifty fifty I suppose they owe me like eight more million. So I'm trying to get in touch with Universal and it's been a battle ever since. Yeah. Do you know how many niggas is going through problems with Universal with publishing and shit like that? Yeah, a lot. Mm -hmm. And then there's a statute of limitations. How the fuck is there going to be a statute of limitations on my money? That's crazy. This isn't murder. You know what I'm saying? Uh, like, yeah. what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. Wow. Yeah, so, you know, you know, like, I've always, listen, 
Math, all I wanted to do was just, I was a street nigga that just loved hip hop, man. I didn't know I was going to meet Dave and be with the Source and magazines. But when I got there, I, I made the best of it. Source Awards had a lot, of, a, lot, a lot to do with me. Source TV show, Lisa Ray and Tretch, the first one of its kinds. That was my idea. Source Sound Life gave Ray J his first shot. You know what I'm saying? All them niggas, um, Kevin Hart, um, Flex, all them gave them niggas their first host job. Bernie Mac hosted the first one. Like, that was me. Rest in peace. That was me. You know what I'm saying? You Messed know what I'm saying? Up with I was, I was making Magruder, those. Though. You know what I'm saying? But I'm saying, like, I, I was making those decisions. Shout out right. to the Boondocks. You know what I'm saying? Look at, look at the Boondocks that came to. See, I had nothing to do with that. But, but the source came. The source was a magazine of, of a lot of amazing minds. But I was the nigga that was the bad guy. Mm -hmm. Half the shit that was going on, I never got credit for. And I said, fuck it. After a while, I got tired of it. We would be going places, and they'd be like, no, no, come on. It's really him. He would be telling people, it's really him. He's really the mind behind us. And I'd be like, nah, 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 nah. You know, because I was cool. I was getting money. I was getting, this shit was, the, the money, I didn't even know how much money I had. I didn't even know. It was, it was just, I was doing a crazy, crazy shit. Millions and millions on jewelry. Not just for me, for everybody. I spent millions with Jacob. When you took over the source, was there no, um, as you say, street guys able to take over the jobs that the so-called college guys had? I gave, that's, that's when the Benzino era came in, where half the staff then was half of them were street niggas, and the other half was college. Whereas, whereas before I was there, it was all college. Did that make it better when you- Of course it did, there? because we went on to do amazing things and make millions of dollars and- you know what I'm saying? Be a, be, be a huge imprint. The, the 94 crew, they didn't take it to that. They made it to 94. Mm. The la, you know what I'm saying? The, their last cover was Reggie Noble with the shit in his nose. After mm. that, Source Behind Balls, that was solely my idea. One of the biggest covers we ever sold. Solely my idea. What sold the most? Source Behind Balls was one of them. Well, what was the, the highest selling? Uh, you have to look at... Yeah, I, that's, you know what I'm saying? You know, I, I think what, Dave, what, Dave would it? know those. Was Dave it Jay, with Jay and Dame? I don't think that sold more than the uh, LL Cool J Five Mike. I think that I think that I think the Dre cover with the gun to his head sold a, a, a lot. No, no, no. Excuse me. The Tupac. That was a big ass Tupac. cover. Tupac. Both that of his. That, if that Both wasn't his. the one, that was up there. Both mm -hmm. of his. His death one and his other one. And Biggie's death cover was went. That was crazy. a big one too. Um, nah, I, I saw you in an interview recently. You were talking about. How Jay and Dan came up there, and they, I mean, it was an issue because hectic. you know, you know, I, I didn't get involved with, with too much when it came to it, but you know, this is a, this is our magazine, right? Mm. And I don't get involved with the gripes, whoever, because at the end of the day, people thought I was up there, like, yo, he's the muscle, so he, there's no way he he has a brain, there's no way he didn't go to college, he can't be, you know he's up there making sure niggas, so you know, which which was true, all that was true, but then I started learning a lot of shit from from people listening at the magazine, learning brands and everything, and separate myself from an artist. But, I, but my, my love had always been hip hop. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, you know what I'm saying? I had a big ass crew in Boston and I had some niggas in New York. And, 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 and you know, of course it's a multi-million dollar company. There has to be some order and organization. I come from that. My father's whole life was that. I knew how to do that. Mm -hmm. that now that I knew how to do. But I had to walk a tightrope because I didn't want to scare people too. I, I understood that. Mm -hmm. Me and Dave would have conversations about that. And I, after a while, my relationship at years went on. I really was a better relationship. But some of the people were handpicked for me to go in and to interact with the college, to let niggas know street. Like Carlito came straight out of jail. Straight out. It's probably still in the fucking halfway house. And come on, my nigga, let's go. You know what I'm saying? Because that, I always want to give that nigga the chance to show like, Man, there's so much talent, and hip hop can allow that. Hip hop's right. the only genre that can allow, allow that. A, right. that type of shit. And they get out of jail and just have a fucking career, right? With a clothing company, with a fuck. I mean, come on, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it wasn't, and it's not like I was against college niggas because I would want my kids to go to college. My aspirations were all my kids to go to college, like. So it wasn't that I respected all that, man. Like my God rest him, man. John, my mother let. Our cousin from Cape Cod come stay with us, and he was a lawyer. He went to college, man, and you know what I'm saying. On, he he on his way to his graduation, man, and got hit by a car and died. But he wasn't a street nigga, man. And like I love John to death. Like I'm not just because, sure, like you said, contradictions. But 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 you live and you learn, bro. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, where I, like honestly, like where I come from was fucked up. Death, destruction, and people don't understand Boston and Roxbury and Dorchester. Like, you just don't get it. Like, it was fucked up. It was bad. And, you know, like, I didn't know all that. I didn't, you know what I'm saying? All I knew was, like, all fucked up shit. Mm -hmm. So, so I'm, so me getting around Dave is, you know, is like taming me a little bit, getting me there. You know what I'm saying? And even with the gay community, tolerate, tolerate gay. Like I had to grow into this and learn this because I did not grow up with nothing else but other shit, other crazy shit. So I was an asshole sometimes, and I and I know that, and I wasn't right, and that's not the way to be. Right. You know what I'm saying? You know, you have to try to. You know, you have to try to like stay in your lane in certain things, but I was transitioning. And, and I never really transitioned. Because to this day, people still think, you know, you fucked the sauce up. And I didn't fuck the sauce up. No, no, we didn't pay on the note. We had to sell some of our percentage to Black Enterprise. And then they, they had three people on the board. We had two, they kicked us out and that was it. Gone, but we didn't have to pay the $30 million. Mm. We went to Bob Johnson, me and Dave in his office, we sold BET for three billion. And Bob said, I'm gonna I'm leave the room. I'm gonna, I'm not, I, in other words, I don't even wanna talk. I, I went up there with some leather pants on and an Adidas shirt and Dave, you know, with some jeans on. And I know he was like, who the fuck is this? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I know he looked at me like that. Bob, fly nigga. Bob knew Dave, he didn't know me. But for this meeting, I'm going, you know what I'm saying? Right. He said, I'm gonna put on a piece of paper, leave it for you and walk out. When you come in, you say yes or no. We had folded the paper, it was 55 million. And you know, I looked at Dave and Dave looked at me and I was like, and he was like, what you want to do? I, said, I started counting. So we owe the bank 30. Taxes, tax is gonna take half. We got some loose ends to clean up with some lawyers and lawsuits. We'll walk away with three and a half, four million and Bob didn't want us to stay on. If Bob would have had to stay on the salary and just realized that me and Dave's relationship as unorthodox as it was, is what made the sauce work. Now there was a couple of blips with the M&M, but fuck that. That little small situation had nothing to do with the mega shit that we was doing and, and, and accomplished. Right. And people gotta realize that. And a nigga that helped accomplish is a nigga that barely graduated from high school. I was given points to graduate just so my mother would be back. Like, bro, like I was as street as they come and I, I, did, I did not, you know what I'm saying, know I was going that route in life. Mm. Motherfuckers should be proud of that and, sh and should like that. You know what I'm saying? And that's what made the sauce tick. And then I'm in the streets and I'm fucking with all these niggas, these street niggas. Sauce Magazine award Awards, that's not easy. Like Dave wouldn't be able just to fuck with street niggas. You gotta be able to fuck with the street. The sauce's success wouldn't have been if I wasn't in the streets delegating. Right. It, just wouldn't have, it just wouldn't have been the same. That was the difference between sauce and XXL. XXL was cool, but they, was, they didn't nearly come close to what we were selling. And advertising, mm. not even close. But Coke, Pepsi, we get it. Right. You know what I'm Them niggas bit our whole shit. Mm. You know, Elliot, I was cool as fuck with Elliot until he went over there, and I still was cool with him until he put some funny looking picture of me and my son with the Fifty Cent beef. I said, we walked across because it wasn't too far. We walked from Park. Me and a bunch of niggas went up in there. He came out. I grabbed him. If you ever in your life ever do some shit with me and my son again, I'm spitting on his I will motherfucking drag you out of here. The whole staff of them was there. My whole staff was right there. And I was like this. If you ever in your life, yeah, because why would you put a funny looking, I'm one thing, what are you putting my kid in there for? Point. A Ray Ray. Yeah. And we walked right over. It was about a good 11 of us. And the whole staff came out and we in the, it's certain shit that these niggas be doing. These journalists and these critics and these, I, you know what I mean? I'm not, no, I'm not no bully, I'm not no troublemaker and I love hip hop. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not. I, I'm not. <laughs> no, I get it. I get it's it. It's a different yeah, way of life, listen, bro. It's just, crazy. when you come from a certain <laughs> background, <laughs> nuts, man. let that shit out, man. When you, <laughs> no, 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 hold on, bro, hold on, hold on. Y'all laughing and shit, but, but I get it. It's when you come from a background where you have to have respect to survive, right. and then you get around people who play with respect. I'm about to, I'm about to leave it shortly, Zeno. I'll be there shortly, all right? Okay. I love you. Love you too. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh. 
Yeah, the softer Probably. side, but, but yeah, but, but yeah. <laughs> it just to show when you come from a background of respect, you're just not gonna understand somebody playing and thinking it's okay. That's all, man. You understand that? Yeah, because I went through that in battle rap. When motherfuckers right. would say certain things, I'd be like, "What did you say?" Or well, I did certain things to people. They looked at me like I was crazy, but I'm thinking. Y'all rap like y'all from this. This is what happens here. It's the same thing, man. Right. It's the same. Like why y'all perpetrating thing. that? <laughs> and you not really that. I'm so glad. Because when you do that, I'm so glad. And that, this is what happens. Exactly. That That's nigga's hard. rapping about doing shit to people. You get a nigga that rap and do shit to people. It's different. And then it's like, it's oh no, Cruzabo, <laughs> he's fucking up the culture. Bro. What? What are you that's, talking that's about? That's where the culture came from. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But you want to be like me. That's what my man used to say to me. He was like, yo, you trying to be like these niggas. These niggas trying to be like you, bro. Mecca, that's there the divide go. in hip hop that I keep saying. There's a divide. And, it, and, and we have to find common ground. And, and it's good. I'm glad I did this. I'm so glad because at the end of the day, you know, I want people to know white people, white people included. Like everybody, hip hop is what brings us together. We are all brothers. Like there is no, if you're not, if you fuck with me, I fuck with you. Like Eminem shouldn't be used and, and they use him. His fans is, it's not even him, but his fans are super, super crazy. And they'll make, you know, these, we're talking 13 year old kids in Croatia. Like Eminem fucking killed you, you fucking asshole. Like these are the DMs. <laughs> 13 year old kid in Croatia, my nigga. I just be in there. Like what the fuck, man, in 2023, real talk, like. I be getting this shit constantly. Niggas be doing that shit in different languages to me. <laughs> Arabic. And they're not even supposed to fuck with. See, so this is how deep it is. Yeah, Arabic niggas cursing me out for Eminem. Wow. wow. So, so I get his influence. Mm -hmm. And I'm not on that. I would love to, to meet him. I would love to just get a dialogue, you know what I'm saying? It was a, and if there was anything personal that he took, we can, if, if apologies needed, because I've apologized all my life to people, man. I don't, I'm not a bad guy. Right. And, 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 but, but it took me a long time to get this. Most guys don't live this long. You know what I'm saying? It took me a while to get to, I'm 58. Like, it took, like I'm, I wasn't supposed to even get, 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 to, get here this long. None of my niggas are here. None of my, all my niggas is dead. Yeah. And everybody I ever love is dead or in jail. I had to get with younger niggas. Six, seven year old younger than me niggas, because all my niggas I actually came out the house with a gone. Right. So I had to get with that generation. You know, so, you know, like I, you know, it, it, and it was sad that all those years was a divide because when you think about it, you know, we're just up there in the culture trying to, everybody's trying to, they had a job to do. You know, I'm trying to transition into life of a company and be a leader and trying to, you know, not be, you know what I'm saying? That. And, and it's not be that, and, it, and it's taking time. And, you know, even my dad, like my dad, I just left him. Like my dad, I love my dad to death, so me and Zeno, I brought Zeno, it was the first time we stayed at my dad's, man. And I love my dad so much, man. It's like, my dad still got his ways. He still got that, you know, my sister wanted to take pictures. I don't want to fucking take a picture no more, you know what I'm saying? I already took fucking pictures. But you know what I'm saying? He's still like, yeah. you know, it's still pieces there. There are pieces in you yeah. as human beings that are gonna be with you. Right. And of course I have trauma. Of course I do. And of course I mask it. You have to. You know what I'm saying? That's what makes you civilized. Is to mask your trauma enough to be amongst. I don't think you mask it though. I, I mean, I think I think that you reply to things you see that people say about that you. That I shouldn't. No, you shouldn't, but that's a part of the trauma. It's reactory, right? You react according to something that is said about you or somebody defaming your character, whatever the case may be. The way you react is a part of your trauma. And I, I tell you how I got over the shit. 100%. Just look for the good shit. Right. That's oh, where I'm at now. Shit. That's where I'm at now. Just look for the good shit. But that's where I'm at now. Like yeah. now, like I was so excited and happy to be here, you know, because it's like, my, you know, because I knew I would be able, because I knew, like, I know Mac, I know Mac, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, and I'm up there and I'm like, I get impressed by intelligence. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'll sit back, you know what I'm saying? And man, when I'm hearing some shit, I'm like, oh, he's sharp. Right. So it's just not rapping, because rapping would like that too. But if 
Everybody in here, man, if you hear niggas kick some sharp conversation, the same way you feel about niggas kicking some lyrics, you're going to feel the same way about right. that nigga kicking that conversation. conversation. Right. It's just that rappers is just more sexier. So that's why rappers get, I want to be the rapper, but people don't understand. It's just, it's not just rap. It's just us as a people. Like hip hop saved our fucking lives. Everybody in here. You know what I'm saying? So, mm. you know, you know, I look back on it now and, and I'm thinking the way it was, was just the balance of how it should have been. Because if it wasn't, then who knows what the source would have been. And, and that's just, now I look at Mecca and see, it, it, he he's, and, and even James Bernard and Schechter, they all contributed to what that magazine had to be and how it got so big. But I did too. And that's all. And I recognize it now, and I hope they do too. You know what I'm saying? It like, and then we can put it to rest. Real quick before we wrap up, I just got a, one thing for the children. A lot of people don't know this, so just have to be touched on because just haven't been spoken on. So um, you were one of probably the first rappers that were targeted in his own community. Yeah. You know, this is something big to all the rappers out there. So yeah. when you go to Boston, for you guys that don't travel, that don't know, if you go to Boston, he's targeted. To this day, he's legendary out there with the powers that be. They hate him, they want to take him down. He's nothing Man. like normal in Man. Boston. I can state that for a fact as I be in Boston. So the point I want to get at is, being that you were like one of the original rappers that were targeted by the powers that being eventually even had to leave Boston because of that. How, what do you say to the rappers nowadays that are pretty Man. much replicas of you that don't even know it, that are in their cities, Man, first targets? Of all, yeah. First of all, I, want, I really appreciate you saying. Yes. More than you know. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Because people just don't know that side and you know, it's almost, you know, we live in a time where it's almost like two dimensions. Like, it's almost like that never existed. It, like, it, it now is because the young kids don't really give a fuck about none of that. Mm. And the millenniums, if they're the ones running the culture. It's based around them. So people don't really see what you went through. You know what I'm saying? And what you had to go through. Like, Boston, like, because of my father, because of, like, you know, like, it was to the point where police were trying to kill me. Yeah. Police were trying to, like, get shit, plant shit on me. Yeah. Like, they followed me, you know, the, fed, the, the feds got the investigation. I was being investigated for three years. They put in, the accountant in the source a fucking wire. This is the Boston feds. The letter, he wore a wire. We pay him 150,000 a year. This nigga wore a wire. I, didn't, I never did nothing to him. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, just, you know what I'm saying? Like. It ain't, it's, you know, trying, and then you get all the scrutiny from the, from everybody. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you're this, you're that, you're this, you're that. You know what I'm saying? But you really are going through real life shit that can shape your life. Like they, like they were trying to hit me with the Rico. You know what I'm saying? Like the, the original numbers was, they, they offered me 25 before my mother died. They went and had a meeting with her. They weren't supposed to do that. Which I was telling him to cop out the 25 because we're going to get him, you know, go through, you know, life. He'll get kingpin. Uh, they, they interviewed 160 people. The entire Source magazine, all the entire Source. Now, I don't know if they got you, Mecca. Yeah, but they, you heard about that. They, like the feds interviewed the entire office. Niggas and Jimmy Henchman's brother was telling me that they was pulling niggas out of um, Allenwood up in uh, Pennsylvania. A lot of niggas in Boston. There was over 100 people that they interviewed. They, what they, year they, was this? I'm not good with years. I just know that like, they interviewed like 100 people from everywhere and they was trying to, this was three years investigating me. Mm -hmm. And George wore the wire for eight months. And you eight remember months. George Moore? Remember George, the white boy who was the, um, man, he was cool as fuck. Like, I, I thought everything, this is my man. You know what I'm saying? Like, we used to talk patriots and things. Because see, me, the real reason why I, you know, and I don't want to say this because I don't want the police, but it's like, I'm not no dumb motherfucker. I just don't be chatting around anything around anybody. Yeah. Dave hired him. White guy out of Jersey. I think he was half Jewish, half Italian. Hey, George, how, his office, the way it is, the journalists are over there, the business is over here. The business is smaller. Journalists is animal house, the business is quiet, you know, Dave, you know what I'm saying? 
Mm. So, right? Right? Split. The little white guy to the left on this side? George Moore. With the dark hair? George mm. Moore. He, he was wearing a wire? <coughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, came, he came and testified and sat in... I'm sitting here. He I sat, came. You on that shit. And no, I fact, almost got in a fight with that kid. Oh, I almost got in a because I my job. This is wow. so stupid. Wow. My job was to my what part of my job was to get the new magazines when they came in and give them to everybody in the office because they needed to give them out to whatever label, right. whatever artist, right. et cetera, et cetera. Right. Especially if you had the cup. Mm -hmm. I always told everybody to give me the number of magazines they needed so I didn't have to make a whole bunch of trips. People would just say boxes, but if the magazine was thicker or thinner, the box size, it'd be different. One right. box can hold 100, another one can only hold 50. It depends. Right. Give me the number you need. And I remember specifically going around the corner, <laughs> yakking at the, the two girls were like, give me three boxes. I was like, give me numbers. Stop doing that. Mm -hmm. And he came out the office and said, Mecca, just go get the fucking boxes. You don't do shit around here anyway. Wow. And I remember taking off my phone and my two-way and walking up to him and going, or else what? Right. And it was the one time I lost my like composure wow. because I didn't want to get wow. in trouble. You cutting this out. We're cutting this out. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't going to have the feds up in here, baby. We're not doing it. No, if it's <laughs> talking about a government informant right now. At the, <laughs> no, no, sir. If it's we're not doing we, that. If it's the guy we're <laughs> talking about, if it's That's the same dude we're talking about. He was right there next up to the left today. He yes. sat across from Chris. Yes, he had that haircut, the black hair. We don't say always wore yeah, a button. He said white guy. It was only one him. white guy. Over. I always wore a button up and look it. And this is now this is gonna this is the button up shirt. This was gonna fuck you up. Look, so look, he would always come with the button up. So everybody else is hip hopped out, right? Mm. Okay, he's the, he's the accountant. He handles all the you know. He got a wire. Now, on. Now, now, no, 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 but no, 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 no. But all of a sudden he starts showing up with a name tag hanging out the pocket, right? So I, when I came in one time, I'm like. I remember the shit. It had numbers on it, little words on it. I'm like, maybe this is some shit that all accountants in New York got to wear. Because I didn't understand why the fuck he, or he has a second, or I'm thinking, does he have another job? Right. But I seen the fucking wire because, it, it, because the first thing I said was, I noticed that he would come to work with the fucking thing before he never had it. It was just, he would always wear the shirts with the little pocket. Mm. But then he had the thing clip on. It was, it was, you could see the metal part in it. And it was, and I just was like, I was like, why does this, first I'm thinking, does everybody in the fucking source guy want to one day Dave's giving niggas? Then I'm thinking, maybe this is a cop, like, I remember what I was thinking. Because that shit's just like, beep, beep, beep. See, I got fucking radar for that shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just never paid it no attention. He used to run around with me, hey, Ray, we got to do your taxes. And I used to be like, well, my man, what the fuck are we hiring? What are we giving you $150,000 for? I, and I used to be like, Dave, talk to him, bro. I'd be on the tour bus. After a while, I wouldn't even pick his phone up. Something was funny. Two times, it comes to the back of the tour bus, yo, it's George Moore. Hey, Ray, we got to... <sighs> now, this is the funny shit. When you get indicted, you get to get all the transcripts and see what happens, right? <laughs> After I hang up, he was like, that son of a bitch hung up on me again. <laughs> on the transcript? On the transcript. <laughs> the son of a bitch hung up on me again. <laughs> hey, yo, you can't make this dumb shit up, bro. That's crazy. This is what the fuck I had to go through this store. That's crazy. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah. so, so he came in. He came in. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. He uh, came in and testified. Nervous as hell. It's me and my lawyer. He came in and, and I had an all white jury. We in a federal building. And really, I think the jury, I think he fucked them up because the jury's like, they asked him, they said he met him over the George Washington Bridge at the Dunkin' Donuts. You know, that, that first Dunkin' Donuts on the left. Right. The over, over, you go over to George, go to Jersey. Right. He said he went in there with him and he just sat down with him. They said, hey, we want you to wear wire for Benzino. And, and my lawyer asked him, why would you do it? He said, because he thought it would be like the movies or something. He said some stupid shit like stupid that. Stupid shit. <laughs> I'm looking. Now, my young, I'm trying to keep a straight face. <laughs> I want to jump up on this motherfucker so bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, I'm looking at this nigga like, and I could not fucking believe. He had no motivation to do this to me. None. I, I never, I, the only time I spoke with him was about New England Patriots and Jets. Bro, like, I don't, I don't, I still to this day don't understand this shit. Wow. Mm. But they found me not fucking guilty and I walked out of court.
Like, look how many people went to court. Right? This was tax evasion. The first charges was two bodies of uh, extortion. They thought it was extorting Dave with thing. There was two bodies in Boston that they'd been investigating niggas on. And then extortion and money laundering because they thought that I was... They didn't know we was getting all these millions a month. They just knew we had to fuck because we were just spending so much fucking money. And there was so many, all kind of shit going on. Gotta be drugs. It can't gotta be hip hop. Be, they're looking at the taxes like, yo, there's gotta be drugs. What the fuck? Are you kidding me? I didn't know a W9 from a W5, a W1. What the fuck is that? <laughs> shit, we win. <laughs> Holy so shit. So the young rappers in your yeah. position move move out of town or the bottom line is this, right? If, if if people don't think, and not just rappers, just niggas, if y'all don't think that the number one tool for the police nowadays is not looking at your social media, then you, you have to be like you you have to, you, you have to be stupid. Like that's the number one fucking thing is the social media. Mm. They're looking at everything, every gun you flashing, every piece of money you holding, every nigga you with, every chick you fucking, every street you're on, everything you post, every word, every sentence, it all comes together as a puzzle later on. Mm. They're all pieces to the puzzle that they just sit there and put together once something happens and what the fuck can you do? You, 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 now, see, we rapped about shit that was in the streets. Now, they feel like they have to go out there and do it to rap about it mm. to get the clout. It's a dangerous cycle. What's they want to be real, yeah. not good. You know? Attention yeah. is a new currency. They almost <laughs> punched the Fed. <laughs> Yo, real quick, I just, I just want to, I want to say this. Y'all are laughing like you don't know how close I was to like putting hands on him. You really balked yeah. on that. Would have been in the transcript. <laughs> you might have Or else, <laughs> yeah, it might have been. Yo, he Someone really he balked on me in front of everybody. No yeah. one had ever. Done he had that no before. reason to balk on me, but see, people power power trip. Like he's a see, he's up there seeing. Oh, it is the money, the thing. He's sitting up there like. I can take it down. No, no, he's a fucking <laughs> oh. niggas. Oh, I got to go home to my wife. He probably hate the way his wife look. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And we just That's up good. there and Z's up there. I'm, I, I'm smoking. The office is smoked out and blasting music. Yeah. And like, hey, George, yeah, you see the Jets game? Yeah, but yeah. Ha, ha. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. he, he's looking at us like animals. Yeah. So it was easy for them to sit in fucking Dunkin' Donuts with some coffee and a fucking glazed donut to be like, yeah, let me fuck his life. Up. Oh my God. Hey, this so is a laugh for a moment. Nobody take this no way. Why did two white guys laugh? No, no, no. It was a white and a black dude. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. No wise, no wise. No, 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 two no, white yeah. guys? No, 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 no. Oh, no, man. Uh -uh. No, no, I don't think it was that. Okay, okay, okay. No, you go, you go. I, got, I, I hope it wasn't that because... Gary Wine and see. No, I hope it wasn't. They're probably going to something to eat. I hope no, it was. No, no, no. See, because they, 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 look sure it. I got, cool. I got, look I'm it. I brought, sure they're cool I'm guys. working with an artist. I'm <laughs> sure they're cool. I just want to know why they left. No. No, I don't know. Uh, but, but I'm saying, but I'm, you know, security but that's just it though. Like I'm, I'm working with an artist. I'm working with my man A over here. You know what I'm saying? Give me that do his thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, yeah, he's up. A was, he was just not out of most of the interviews. Yeah, he's yeah, he's a lot of Asian. Yeah, A's too, Asian, right. wackos, white. Like, like I just want people to know, like Benzino is far from racist. I just, you know, I made my point. You know what I'm saying? The, that now I'm so glad, Mecca, that we cleared up the source shit. That was mm -hmm. big for me, man. Like I'm happy. I can leave here happy. No, you would, you would just, no, you were bad. You gotta you come were, back and do a part two. You were the yeah, wrong, you were the well, wrong messenger. To talk about. You were yeah, the wrong fact. messenger for and, that message, and he was the wrong guy to go at because M is legitimately nice. I don't want no problems with M. I want to be right here, right now. He's I'm legitimately nice. I don't want, and I've said this before. I've said it, but honestly, I want. A truce. I don't want no issues with Eminem. I just don't. Yeah. Come on the show. Come on in. I want to be able to sit down and talk show. with him. Right. And I be know. like, bro, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, let's see what we got in common. Let's yeah. hang out. Let's yeah. talk about hip hop. Because I could talk like you love with the old school hip hop. Like, like I'm a I'm a fucking master with a master's degree of old school hip hop. Yeah, bro. So you know what I mean? Like I would like if you could set that up. We'll see. Hold on. Hold and on, and I appreciate quick, the alley quick. with Koi too. Real quick. Listen, oh yeah, shout out to your daughter. Shout out, She's shout out to yeah, Cece. I love you, Corey. Oh, shout out to Corey LeRae. I just got to say this because, you know, we were in contact a few weeks ago. So, YKTV Magazine is the biggest brand in prison entertainment. 
It would not be what it is if it wasn't for the foundation you and David Mays laid. Dave Mays Shout laid to Dave Mays, man. Source, Shout right? to Dave Mays, man. Listen, four bids in and out of prison, and all I ever used to look at was the Source man. magazine. Right? Source, the Source was a foundation yep. for information yep. from the outside world to, to behind shit. the wall, right? Yep. And we were able to create something of that that nature but just on a higher level as far as information okay now we're number one come on but man. come on give me we some. appreciate you <laughs> no i appreciate we that. appreciate what you and, I, to and, the and that means a lot for me yeah, no, when, when i first met thing. champ he knew me from my writing yeah he, he knew, knew from his writing. he knew my writing. In the box no, but you're a brilliant you. mind and, and you're serious about that like i said it's it, it's the best it, that's what hip-hop is that was right and i started all this off with the divide it was the brilliant minds of the college, of the organized, of the administrative, and then the streets of the you know what I'm saying, what was going on. And that's what makes our that's what makes our culture so yeah. special. It's more than music. And it, it, it should be shared with everybody. The information it, that gets shared from different has to, there's nothing sides of the that. spectrum. It's a beautiful yeah. thing. Yeah. I want to send some shots out before I go. Yeah, yeah. I definitely, you know what I'm saying? Definitely want to send a shout out to my guys, Tiger. Slab, you know what I'm saying? My baby Ashley. Um, definitely Chavo, you know, look out for him. Chavo, my son, you know what I'm saying? Matthew Chavo, Taj, of course, the superstar, my baby Corda Ray. I seen the interview right here. I, I was I, I was crying, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. People, yo, did you hear what she's yo, she's she's and then she 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 apologized and no, no, no. I really appreciate y'all for that. It was it was no, good. No it was good. It was and I, you know, um that was the first moment that Got me to go see her in Rolling Loud, and you know what I'm saying? Wow! Yeah, wow! Big up to that. Big up to that. Big up to that. That's what's up. That's what's up. That's what's up. I, I, I really, you know, I don't, this, you know. Don't, don't get me all choked up. I don't want to cry. No, no, no. I'm known to cry. I like that. You don't realize yet. I'm trying to tell you. Do you realize, yet. You you know realize yet that no. she tricked you into sending that camera so she could start a rap career? Man, you know, <laughs> I learned so much about her that, that that night. Yeah. And from, you know what I'm saying, like, it was almost like, man, like, honestly, like, I mean, I really appreciate it. It was bigger than, for me, than what y'all think. It was, it was, that had to happen, like, because the whole thing was on social media. Like, that's my baby. Like, we had a whole life without social media, and it was great. Right. Okay, but unfortunately, things happened the way they did, but her coming up here and y'all being how y'all are had to take place because, you know, it was, it was something where, like, the the youth really, it's not necessarily, the youth really fuck with social media. Yeah. And, and that was her way to come on here and say, look, dad, it's love. And I respect that. And I appreciate that, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. you know, uh, you know I don't take shit for granted. Like, you know, every moment, the good moments, you know what I'm saying? I love all that shit. I'm not, I get embarrassed with that shit. I don't. Speak, speaking I don't, of the good moments, you recorded her very young. Yeah. Rapping. Yeah. In the video. Yeah. You didn't know what you started that day. Nah. Nah. Nah, mm -hmm. nah, I didn't. I didn't. I, you know, I had no idea. Ray Ray, I was focusing on Ray Ray. Because Ray Ray had already got the deal at nine years old. And, you know, and then he's a, he's my son. And I'm not looking at, you know, I'm looking at Corey like I want my baby. And if she is going to rap, she has to rap, you know, real good songs and not, I'm <laughs> yeah. looking at her in a whole, see, as a dad, you look at your daughters in a whole different light. You don't look at them the way everybody else right. looks at them. You know, there's, there's no way you can. Mm -hmm. And I kept all my street shit from her. You know, me and her mother, we didn't, we, it's not, you know, I kept it all from her. Like, I didn't want her to see that. I didn't want to bring that around, you know what I'm saying? Because there was a lot of shit going on. Right. And, you know, I wanted to share that from her. So she necessarily didn't know I necessarily didn't know who her father was, but that half of my life she just didn't know. And that was a big part of my life. Yeah. You know, and then you know, math, like when you're in the streets, there's no time the way we want to spend with our kids because you're in the streets. Right. When you're in the industry, there's no time because we're in the industry. Like time, you know, as a black man, it's hard to have time with the kids because we gotta come out here and try to find other ways that take up our time to get money to try to get them things. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like when they, you know what I'm saying? Like I don't want. But at the end of the day, have. one thing that I learned is the things ain't what they want. They, they want, want the time. time. They want mm -hmm. the time. They want the time. I know now. I know now. You know, like I said, you live and learn, and you know, she knows, and as she apologized, I want to apologize to her too. That you know that you know uh, though, that that I wasn't, you know, there, you know, at the times that she wanted me to be there. 
And and I also apologize for like her looking at me on Love and Hip Hop because you know I I know that was hard. Yeah. Me with different women and everything. You know, when Court would come visit me and I, you know, I'd have different women. Court Court, like out of all my kids, Coy would grow the shit out of me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, like, you know, because Coy Coy just seen her mother as most daughters are. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Right. I didn't, you know, back then everything was moving fast. I was taking care of a lot of people, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people and doing a lot of different, you know, situations. And I got caught up in a lot of different situations and, you know, you know, it's no excuse, but that was my life. Right. Sure, can I, I want to go back to go back to spend the time with her, but you know, that was my life. And you know what I'm saying? Listen, she didn't turn out bad. Not at all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Not at all. <laughs> you know, so, you know, with, with, with the grace of God, it worked out, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, none of my kids got felonies, you know what I'm saying? Like, but I want to remind you kids. that that one moment that you recorded her rapping. I didn't know. No, math, not at all. I didn't know. Coy's just typed to be like, yo, I'm going to prove everybody wrong. I'm going to be relentless. She's relentless. Yeah. She's not, you know, Ray Ray's more smooth, but Coy is just like, nah, I'm going to make motherfuckers. I'm going to show motherfuckers, and that's just going to be what it is. And it's, yeah. she didn't stop when. I remember her, she did say this. It's not even corny. She's like, you watch. I'm going to be big as shit. You watch. You watch. I'm like, okay. You know what I'm saying? Of course, you're going to say, okay, but it's not in your mind. Like, you're going to, like, no, I didn't see this. I'm, I'm st it's still surreal. I'm still not. This isn't still processing. Right. Because I didn't see that for her. Right. And then I didn't see this image of her. But you didn't, you didn't see her always wanting to be downstairs in the studio either. No, I didn't. I didn't. Yeah. Yeah, that was deep. It was a deep episode, man. It made me I think about my daughters, made me think about my kids. Mm -hmm. And and the things that I introduced to them at young as a at a young age and seeing what it became later. And to see, yo, that's I mean, you know, amazing. you know, like, you know, like the the, the the there's nothing more, you know, she's tatted, she's been tatted when she was she was born. Like, there's nothing mm -hmm. more that you want your kids to be successful and, and, and they're financially independent. Like what, like, man, when people be like, okay, see, th there's a, a fake page called I Am Benzino. Now, I Am Benzino was my page when I had a million something followers. Mm. Now, I had 17,000 pictures in 2012, all of Koi and everybody when she's lived with me. And you know, some pictures are gone because they, they, they knocked my shit down. But it's like, come on, man, like, I Am Benzino was saying sucker shit and people thought it was me against Koi. Mm. And that's not me. They they try to sell me the page. They got my DMs. They say, yo, you can buy the page for four thousand. I said, if I ever find out who you are. But people to this day still think that that was me, so I get blamed for that. Wow. People want to find reasons to be mad at me. Like the Koi situation, I get it. But I wasn't a deadbeat dad. That's throw that out the window. Cause she was still with me four months out the year. Every year. When me and her mom broke up at ten years, you know. From 15, after that, you don't want it. You know, I want to be out boys, and I want to be with my, my people. You don't want to come with, with dad. That's how I was. You know, you know, you outgrow that. You know what I'm saying? I get right. that. But from, say, 10, from when we broke up to, like, 4, 15, she's with me four months out the year. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, you know, so, you know, her mother did a great job. I did a great job. Like, me and her mother are super cool now, which is big. Big. It's huge. I never could understand, like, we lay down with women and we have kids with them. And then we become so like they are our enemies. And I and, and, and I'm a victim, not a victim, and I'm a perpetrator of that too. Yeah. And I and that shit is like crazy. Like well, you know what it is, man. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't, you can't. You I'm can't ashamed hate of myself somebody. with that. No, but you can't hate somebody as much as someone you used to love. Ooh, love and hate like is that. like they're like yeah, this. Right there. That's real. That's, give me, yeah. give me some, give me some, give me some, that's real shit. That's, that's, yeah, that's yeah, real drop shit. that. That was that was a. I hope they heard that because you know, we just don't know how to channel our energy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But being friends, you know, and I want I want to be able to be friends with all my. I got three babies, mothers. You know I what I'm saying? Four. Yeah, four. God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he has. God bless you. Yes, he has. God bless you. No, no, it's it's a task. It's it's a task, you know. And and daughters, daughters, you know, for for a street guy, sons are easy. For a suburban guy, daughters would be easy. 
Right. For a street guy, daughters are hard, daughters bro. Daughters are hard. For a street guy, daughters are hard. If you yeah. ain't got your shit together in this uh, world, it's hard for daughters. daughters. Yeah. Sons understand. Sons yeah. don't, you know, it's dad, dad, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Daughters are different. And that's, that's why, that's why we, not that we're victims, but I'm saying though, that's the rap we get because people don't get that. A street nigga is a type of nigga. Like we, you know what I'm saying? Like right. we, we are a type of, we, that's how we grew up and that's a lifestyle and it's not easy. Raising a daughter in that, that lifestyle, lifestyle for yeah. all of us. It's not easy not just the Z period, story. but daughters, yeah. are, it's tough. Yeah. Because you always have the common sense to know she shouldn't be around this. Come on. And you don't want them niggas fucking with her. You don't want your niggas, the type of niggas, fucking with her. All right, well, then now she's of age and she's like, nah, motherfucker. She can say that now. Nah, motherfucker. You know, you, you're like, Ur. you know, what I'm saying? Ur, you can't do nothing. You know, what I'm saying, like, I, I heard what she said, I raised my voice, but that was my, because I would never hit her. Yeah. Right? I have to put some type of something in her so she don't get too far off. Right. You got to scare them a little bit to make sure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because they got to have a conscience. Remember, my mother put the conscience in me. If I would have just went under my father, Lord knows. But if you don't give your kids conscience, then you know, and that's what I try to give her. That's all. You know what I'm saying? And and, and her mother was there. And, and I did my part as well, for what I did. But if she's upset about enough, then I apologize for that. And I wish I could. Well, y'all got been. time now. Of course. Got God time willing. Time. God willing. Word. For a long Word. time. Word. Dope. Spend that time. I will. Benzino, y'all. Y'all can stop hating. Yeah. Stop hating. Yeah. And, and you owe me some Chinese food. Who, me? Yeah. You owe me an a, a <laughs> unsigned hype. <laughs> Baby mama thirst you heard. Feel the flow, nigga, throw it in reverse. This the way you need to serve.